in today's X's and O's. And Dave, the first point we'd like to make is turnovers and penalties. The offense has got to keep their composure and prevent these penalties, and the defense still has to come up with those big plays. Exactly. Uh, last week, turnovers lost the game essentially for Butler. Butler turns the ball over three times when they were getting ready to score, and you can't do that. You've got to hold on to the ball and push the ball in. A penalty's not a big factor, but whoever wins the penalty and turnover ratio will win this ball game, Brian. And of, uh, course, of course, Butler committing four turnovers last week, and three of those led directly to Drake touchdowns. The second point in our in our in our breakdown, a breakthrough game for Arnold Mickens. Last year he ran for 295 yards, a record. Despite losing the game, we saw some holes opening up for him last week, and you got to think if those holes are there this week, he could really bust it open. Well, it's only going to be a matter of time before Mickens is going to get a big ball game, and we certainly hope it is today, being homecoming and everything. Huge game last year, and still the loss. And Mickens wants, he's got a little vengeance on his mind today. Plus, he's very frustrated, and he's ready to get a big game. Foul ball, having trouble stopping the rush. We see 156 yards. And once again, that outstanding game last year, 295 for Valpo. Finally, let's wrap up the X's and O's. They got to build on their improvements, Dave. Um, the D made some big stops last weekend, but inconsistency led to touchdowns. They've got to stay intense the whole game. And of course, uh, the offense is producing, but they've got to follow through with touchdowns. This is we've talked all year. They have to put, they have to put four quarters together, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, Brian. If they do, they'll be successful today in this homecoming uh, game against Valparaiso. Well, homecoming, an emotional time for many players. These Butler Bulldogs getting down to business. With more, we'll have Drew Johnson down on the sideline here shortly. As the kicking teams begin to take the field, it'll be Butler to receive. A lot of emotion down on the sideline with more. Here's Drew Johnson. Hey, Brian, Dave, thanks a lot couple of things. Last week we talked about the psyche, emotional, talkative kind of motivation going on for Butler before the game. This week, totally different. Totally different this week. Intense concentration. Also, we talked to offensive coordinator Phil Dorn. He said his offense is starting to do some nice things. It's just a matter of scoring points. He thinks today against Valpo, they can do that. Thank you, Drew. And we were kicked off. It's Andrew Adas working it up. He's out to the 28-yard line. And we are underway here in homecoming 1995. It'll be Butler on the offensive. Brian, the game's, not, game? the game's just barely under the way, but uh, you look down at the sideline of Butler and you can see that everybody is intense and fired up. Here's the Butler offense. Burton, Furry, Vitalis, Kremer, Ford, and Abden at the tight end spot. Jacobs, Mickens, Ben Parker, the fullback today. Osani Dillon, Jim Pico. Here's the first offensive play, and it goes to Arnold. He works his way to the outside and is tackled almost immediately. Parker, Parker making his first stop, uh, or excuse me, first start of the game, and didn't do a very good job lead blocking there on that play. Uh, he didn't kick out the end coming or the linebacker coming around there, and that and that caused Mickens to get hit in the back. There's the Valpo defense: Ronnie Sazon, Andre Murphy, Saul Shahid, Iki Adigbo. Josh Burning, Tim Risen making the stop there on Mickens just a moment ago. The Valpo defense, Harrington, Colt, Miller, Zavinsky, and Helton. Here's there Mickens. He goes. He's found a hole. He's out to the 35. The 40, he'll be chased out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And that's what we have to see all game long. And Mickens has the speed and he has the ability to do it. We all know that. And I think this is going to be a big game. Look at Mickens. He's getting the crowd fired up and his teammates fired up. I've never seen him so pumped before a game, Ryan. Arnold Mickens, the leader on this team, more importantly, a leader by example. 168 yards in that game last week against Drake, and he's certainly going to look to up his numbers here against Valparaiso. Butler going with four wideouts here on this play. Shotgun formation, something we don't see a whole lot of. It's Jacobs back to pass. He's got plenty of time. He finds Hassani Dillon. He's out close to a first down. That was the first time I've ever seen that formation out of Butler, Brian. Uh, the shotgun, man, they never go out of the shotgun, but it's going to be effective. They got some quick people out there outside like Hassani Dillon and John Knight, both big play guys. Out close to a first down. 
Gets out to about the 47 yard line on that one. It'll be second and one for the Bulldogs. So coming out here fired up, producing some offense very quickly. Pico, John Knight, Andreatis looking to go out. It's Mickens in the backfield. The handoff is to Andreatis. He bumps his way down the offensive line as another unable to find there. anything. Got some laundry on the field. Last year, that laundry uh, fairly dirty. <laughs> fairly <laughs> dirty. Yes. Talking about Butler yes, uh, chasing sure them was. back to about midfield when you get up to the red zone. Something that Butler well, certainly cannot afford. This time, the penalty is not called on Butler, but on the Crusaders. So that's going to bring up a first down and ten for the Bulldogs. Brian, if you remember last week, Mickens had a huge run. It was almost 25 yards, and it was called back. Uh, that was pretty much the momentum stopper for Butler. And if they can keep those penalties going the other way, you know, keep them on Valparaiso, Butler will, Butler will have a pretty good game today. Well, of course, we talk about how Arnold Mickens has been without a touchdown since the first game. He passed for one last weekend to John Knight. Jacobs gives it off to Mickens. Mickens looks to charge up the middle. Boy, Mickens really should have cut back to the right on that. The whole right side was open. Uh, he had his mind set straight ahead. <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere else. But, he is. Uh, it, was, it was a hard run, man. That defensive line of Valparaiso was tough. Got some experience and got some size there. And uh, the young, young green line, offensive line of Butler is going to have to play their best today. That ball... That wall that Mickens ran into was number 90, Eric Miller, and he stopped Arnold dead in his tracks. The give is to Mickens again. Finds some, a little bit of daylight and works his way up to the 36-yard line. Brian, Butler's going to pull out all the stops today. I think we've already seen that with that with that shotgun formation and then that little quick inside handoff to Lou Andriatis. We've never seen that play either, so what have they got to lose? They might as well get fancy and, and see if something works. They, they need to take whatever they can get right now, and you're going to see Butler doing some things that you've never seen them do in the past. They're going to have a little fun today, I think. Third down and five. The Bulldogs on Valparaiso's 36-yard line. I believe that's going to be on Butler. I, it, looked, it looked like uh, Ross Atten moved a little Ross bit. Ross Atten, rather, jumped off sides yeah. on that one. We'll see what's going on. Arnold Mickens and Toby Jacobs speaking with the officials down there. Mickens likes to be in the middle of those referee conversations, doesn't he? he likes to add his input. Uh, we recall, it's going to be on Butler. We recall that fumble call last week, which upon further review actually was a fumble. Yes, it was. But when we saw it at the game, it was difficult to tell. And uh, Mickens extremely upset with the call. And uh, he was out there talking with the refs there. And really, that's part of his role as a leader, Dave, uh, to get out there and make sure that his team isn't getting short -changed. Somebody has to take control, and he's definitely the man to do it. He can definitely be the intimidator if he wants to be a candy prime. John Knight, Pico wide. Mickens in the backfield. It's Jacobs back to pass. He's got plenty of time. He looks deep to John Knight. And it's just beyond the fingertips as Knight made a nice dive for it there down at about the five-yard line. But Butler starting off strong offensively, but again, a penalty killing of Dave, and they'll go to the sideline. They had good movement on that series. They, they took the ball all the way from the 28 down to the 35 before that penalty. And once again, like you say, the penalty did kill Butler. They lost all that yardage on that um, offsides. Sean Wood into punt. Special teams, a thorn in the side of the Bulldogs last week. Some bad snaps causing problems, and Wood sort of dinks that one down to the 19. So. Wood's been having his problems lately. He started off the season doing very well, but he's, having his, he's getting those opportunities to punt from inside the 50, and he's not doing a very good job at it. He's, he's trying to shank it too much, and he only moves the ball down the field about another 10 yards, which I guess is better than what he had, but you've got to do a little bit better job on that. Well, now we'll get a chance to see that big Valparaiso offense. Kevin McHale, not to be mistaken with the Boston Celtic forward. BB, Rodbro, Fitzgerald, Adams, and Jackson <laughs> at the tight end spot. Browder, Young, Bobic, Talbert, and Heinrichs in for Valpo. We're going to see Ozzy Young now. Ozzy Young is smothered at the line of scrimmage. Look at the pursuit by the Butler defense. <laughs> about uh, seven of the 11 defenders 
were there on the ball. Uh, only a pickup of about one yard. That's the way they're going to have to play all game, and it's going to be tough. They're going to be run back and forth because that option really stretches them out and forces the defense to run fast. Second down and nine for the Valparaiso Crusaders on their own 25-yard line. Nick Browder to take the snap. This time he'll give it off to the fullback. Number 28, Bob Cracknell, who had 80 yards last week against San Diego. Doesn't do very well there. Butler defensive line collapsing on him pretty quickly. And right. it's going to be third and nine. I think you're going to see Valparaiso uh, at the beginning of the game just trying to feel Butler out and see what they can get away with. Um, maybe not so much the option right here from the start, but you're going to see that coming up here very shortly, I'm sure. Third down and nine for the Crusaders. Ten and a half, less than ten and a half to play here in the first quarter. It's Ozzie Young the back. Play action. He's got plenty of time. He looks deep to number nine, Heinrichs, but well out of bounds. So the Butler defense coming in with a big stop to start off this, this game. This is the way they've got to start this game out. I love to see that defense fired up. They're all over the place. I, I've never seen the defense move as well as they're moving right now. I don't know if they changed something in practice this week, but they're doing a great job. Only one yard of offense on that set. Back to punt now. Will be number 39, Kevin Jennings. The snap is good, and then the punt is up and away. Valparaiso having their troubles it as well. Is Lou Andriatis. He'll have to let that roll, and boy, got a nice bounce on that one. Wow. It's out to Butler's 32-yard line. So the offense, who showed some sparks of greatness in that first drive, kind of fizzled out there at the end with a with a penalty. They'll look to pick things up and try to, you know, try to. Uh, take advantage of the, the opportunity the defense has given them. Hey, that's what they have to do. The defense did their job. Now it's the offense's turn. And you got to play as a team. The two sides of the ball have to function together. And Butler hasn't been able to do that. One side does well and the other side does well. Here's the handoff to Mickens. And he is smothered. Looks like short of the line of scrimmage. So we saw some holes there in that first drive, Dave, but they've closed up a bit on them here early. Number well, 93 of Valparaiso, or 95 rather, John Harrington initiating that, but there were about four or five guys on Mickens there. Well, what you're seeing is Butler's not going outside, and that's what was successful there in that first drive was the outside runs. They're not getting anything inside, and I don't think they're going to very much today against this huge defensive line of Valparaiso. Play action. Jacobs rolls out near side. Tries to stretch himself out to the 40, but he only gets out to about the 38. But a nice pickup there. Something that we'll no doubt expect from Nick Browder later on in the game for Valpo. Definitely. You're going to see that a lot out of Nick Browder. But Toby Jacobs showing he does have some speed. They usually put Eli Stoddard in there to replace him on those, on those outside type of running plays. Uh, Eli Stoddard having a little bit of the edge on speed, but Jacobs running tough there. He's a big guy, and, and he can take a blow and, if he gets out there and, uh, and has to get down and hit somebody. So Jacobs is quite an effective runner. 205 pounds is Jacobs, rather large for a quarterback. Mickens rolling his way out to about the 41, still short of a first down. And that's going to bring up fourth down, and it'll be the special teams that come back out and punt away. So four downs and out for Butler that time. I don't understand why Butler's not going outside. They're obviously showing that they're not going to be able to run very well against this Valparaiso defensive line. They need to get it outside. They just kept pounding it inside and not getting anywhere. Somewhat of a low snap, but Wood handles it well. It's Ozzie Young back to receive. He eludes Lou Andriatis, and he's down the sideline. He has one man to beat number 27 of the Bulldogs, Kevin Russell, making a crucial hit that knocks Ozzie Young out of bounds. He doesn't make that hit, Dave. He's possibly down the sideline for a touchdown. That's what scares me so much about Ozzie Young. That's why he's leading the Pioneer Football League in total offense. Those kick returns and punt returns that he does are just unbelievable. He always gets big yardage on those. Butler's got to find some way to stop him. Right there, they just completely let him have the sideline. They didn't. Nobody stayed in their lanes. Everybody crunched to the middle, and that allowed him to get outside. 
Everybody has to stay in their lanes and take their position on a punt like that. Young, not really a pure running back, gets a lot of passes in the flats. There's the handoff to And that's my now. man right there. That's my man. And he is brought down big time by number 53, Ron Griswold. He's my man on the defense. Griswold, just another stellar year so far. He's been the bright spot. He, he and Burrell have been the bright spots of Butler's defense this year. And... And he just comes up with those plays right when you need him, just just to give you something to 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 be excited about. And what a great wrap up and tackle! He's not very big either, and he's playing nose guard against this huge offensive line. And he he plays like he's six five, three hundred pounds, and runs a four four forty. <laughs> Second eleven, three receivers wide for Valparaiso. Play action as Browder rolls out to the far side. He can't find anything. Goes across the middle to Hendricks. What a hit! And he is level. By number 12, Kyle Condon. Kyle yeah. Condon, man, he has been having a great year. He is always pumped up and ready to hit somebody out here, and that's my kind of football. What a drill, man. He, he lifted his feet off the ground. Watch this. Let's take a look at that one again. Let's get a measurement on how far his feet were off the ground when he drilled him. I love this. And Browder really searching for somebody to throw to. Look at this hit. Bam! Oh, man. That was a He's shot. I'm sure he'll feel that one. Tomorrow. Yes, sir. Cracknell, the only back, gets the handoff. Gets up the middle for about a gain of four yards. It looked as though Browder bobbled that ball, but really keeping his composure and uh, giving it off to the fullback Cracknell there. Well, he's a bull, 5'10", 207 pounds, and I bet that's uh, putting him on a diet, 207 pounds. I'm sure he's a little heavier than that. He's a big guy, and he can get some yardage in there inside in, in that running. Uh, so they're going to have to watch out for that quick Quick handoff inside. Here is the flip to Young. He looks to go to the outside. A nice, nice spin move, but didn't get him much. He barely got off the line of scrimmage there. That was a nice defensive play by Jeremy Ely, but he is hurt. I think he about pulled his arm out of socket on that because he just barely grabbed a hold, and it looks like it really jerked his shoulder there, his right shoulder, and it, that's what he's favoring right now. In Germany, comparative advertising is prohibited. For instance, you're not allowed to say one car can out-corner another car, or that one car rides quieter than another car, or that one car is faster than another car. But hey, this is America. The Nissan Maxima. Indiana 105. Indiana 105. He looks like he is favoring that arm, the right arm or shoulder, one or the other, and uh, appears to be in a little bit of pain there, so Dave, hopefully they can fix him up. Dave, you really can't afford to have any more defensive players out. Holstclaw went out Holstclaw. last weekend. That kind of worries me. Um, Holstclaw such a tough defensive end. He has been making some great stops as well. And you know, as a sophomore, first year playing, and he's got a backup here with David Bowers today. He's 6'5", 230, a big guy. We'll have to see how he does and progresses today. Third and seven for the Crusaders. Cracknell, the only back, three wide for Valpo, and they're stopping play. Another little referee convention down there. They, they like to call those occasionally, just to see how everybody's doing. It's a personal time. For sure. Them. It's a bonding thing with referees, I think. <laughs> Six minutes and eight seconds left to play here in the first quarter of the homecoming matchup of 1995, Valpo and Butler. Those of you just joining us, our score is 0-0, third and seven. It's Browder back to pass. He's got a lot of pressure on a nice catch by Heinrichs there across the middle, and that'll be good for another Valparaiso first down. Heinrichs is gonna hurt Butler all day. They're getting him on those inside slants, cutting the cross back through the middle, and that's leaving him wide open, a little cross coverage there. Kyle Condon was with him, but he was just a step behind him, and that's all it takes with Heinrich. Look at the rose there. He's barking out some signals to the dogs. On that last play, Browder about two blinks away from getting sacked, so the defensive line putting on some pressure here early. 
That's going to help. Browner rolls out far side. He's looking to the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. That one intended once again for number nine. That one. Scott Heinrichs. Uh, he was covered by Joe Miles, and I believe Joe Miles just came in and replaced Ely. So uh, Joe not having much experience out there, and he's kind of getting thrown to the dogs, if you will, all at once. Uh, Valparaiso in scoring position. He's got some tough defense to play now. Well, we saw some Butler students really involved here in homecoming. Had a big pep rally down on campus last night. Second and ten now. Browder back to pass. He is rushed and hit that ball. Oh, I don't know about that, boy. And they're going to call that a forward pass. Oh, boy. But number 44 and number 25, Adam Burrell. Adam Burrell and Heath Bunn there putting some incredible pressure on Browder, something they definitely need to do today, Dave. Well, they sent Burrell on the blitz, and then I'll tell you what, Heath Bunn came around the end and met and met him there. Watch this. Watch this replay. This, this is a nice shot they put on the quarterback. We'll see if this really should be called a, a fumble or a or a uh, passing completion. Look, I don't know. See, that was an illegal grounding, if anything else. He threw the ball just to prevent the sack. Hard to say. Browder back to pass again. He's got lots of time here. He sees Heinrichs. A nice catch, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown point. Browder squeezing that pass in there. See, what kills Butler is Heinrich is six foot four. I don't think we've mentioned that. And he's he's a good six, eight inches taller than anybody who defends him. And he has the reach, and you'll, and that's what made gave him the touchdown there. He was able to reach over top of Kyle Condon and grab that ball, turn around, walk into the end zone. Willard Scott here at the Mohawk brand Excellent Showroom. Let me show you something really neat. One of these is an ordinary carpet. The other is a DuPont stain master with a revolutionary backing system called Spill Block. Now watch this. Voila! The Stain Master carpet with Spill Block helps keep spills from soaking through. This means cleanup is a lot easier and it helps reduce odors. Stain Master carpet with Spill Block is available at Mohawk Brand Excellent Showrooms. Tudor Fashion Floors, Valparaiso. Shorthanded due to vacations, family leave, sickness, then your solution is job placement services. JPS takes the guesswork out of employee selection. Applicants go through three steps before they are recommended to you. A detailed application starts the process. Then an intensive personal interview, skills testing, and evaluation. Finally, all references are checked so you only see qualified applicants who fit your requirements. For short-term, temporary, or long-term permanent employees, call Job Placement Services, 462-7894. Well, I'll tell you what, too. Uh, Crowder, he can really rifle that ball. And you have to be right there on the defense. There's no lagging back and then coming up and making the, making the block of the pass. You can't do that. You have to stick right with your man the whole time because Browder can throw that ball and, like you said earlier, thread, it, thread the needle. And he's done that already, you can see, three times just to Heinrich alone. Cameron Hatton with the kickoff, and it is deep. Received by Andreatis. He's up to the 10, the 15, looks across the middle, out to the 25, and brought down hard by number 46 of the Crusaders, Brian Hardy. Well, he pretty much got blindsided by Mr. Hardy there. One of the Hardy boys. Uh, it's like his <laughs> Oh, look at name. this, and we, and we see a little bit of fighting there going on between Jamie Ford and I believe it was number two, Sal Shahid, for Valparaiso. It's going to be interesting to see who they call that on. Shahid only 177 pounds. Ford a little better than 300. Ford weighing in at a grand total of 300. I, I, I got to wonder who's got the advantage in that one. Oh, they're going to give it at the Bulldogs. Oh, man. And you can ill afford to have anything like that. Plus, the way, I don't know what... I don't know what Coach Rose is going to do here because he usually, if somebody gets some type of penalty like that, he pulls him. But he doesn't have anybody to replace Ford, so Ford's kind of got a, a decent guys. situation. He yeah, two guys, he two guys to replace Ford, and he just doesn't have anybody. So. Well, that's certainly... I'm sure a, he'll have a talk with him now. Right? That certainly is a detriment to Butler. They're now back on their own 15-yard line to start things out. Butler's starting off strong with their first offensive drive, but had difficulties in the second one. It's Jacobs back to pass, short one to Andrianis. Here we go, Andrianis. He's out to the 30, the 35, and chased out of bounds at the 36. Yes, I love to see that. They've utilized Lou Andrianis out of that slot position this year. First time they've done that as well. And Lou Andrianis leads the team in receptions. He's been getting little short five-yard receptions for first downs, but this one a big time 
big time uh, play. And look at this replay. Lou Andriatis also has the speed, as you'll see right here. He can get around the corner. This is really set up by a big block. Look right there. Oh, yeah. He cut off Saul Shahid. I believe that was Usani Dillon that made that block out there. Quarterback Andre Murphy doing a good job of getting Andriatis out of bounds there. As Mickens goes to the outside, just kind of falls back to the line of scrimmage as he really had nowhere to go. Well, Ben Parker's going to have to do a better job back there. I like Ben Parker. Great guy, and he's like a truck, too. He's, he's a ball of muscle is what Ben Parker is. But his first start of the season, he saw limited action last week. The first, actually, I believe the first game he's gotten in. Mickens, you're taking a good look at him there. Six foot, 220. And that's, that may be a little shy what he actually is. He's, he's a big man. Ben Parker big, too. 215 pounds. It's Jacobs back to pass. He rolls out far side. Sees John Knight. John and Knight, Knight, look at Knight. Oh, what a play. Puts the tackle, and he's well in front of a first down out to about the 48-yard line. John Bob Knight. Rezo. John Knight, what a play. He had two huge receptions last week in a game against Drake. Of course, the one being the touchdown reception, and he had his longest of career. I believe it was a 56-yarder. Look at this. Jacob scrambling and finds Knight, and then Knight getting away from that shoestring tackle attempt and picking up about an extra seven yards on the on the extra effort there. Great job by John Knight. He's coming into his own this year. First and ten at Valparaiso's 47. Butler trying to put together a score here with the pass again. Oh, I don't and know. And is knocked down. He had no... Rough. Actually, that was, that was Atten, the tight end there on that play. Well, he was just leveled. Wouldn't have had a chance at that one. With a report from the sideline right now, let's take it down to our own Drew Johnson. Hi, Brian. Thanks. Uh, injury report on Jeremy Elias. Stretch out some ligaments in the knee. It was fascinating to see the training crew in action. He'll be okay. He'll go back into the ball game. He's fine. Well, it wasn't the shoulder as I thought. He was favoring his shoulder, though. His shoulder was down. I didn't know. Mickens with the run now. He's out close to the 43-yard line. We want to... Make a correction on that last play. That was actually Paul Flick. Getting our, getting our numbers mixed up here in the booth. Paul Flick, a great guy. He's a senior this year. Hasn't seen any playing time, and mostly because of injuries. He's had a ton of injuries, and he got injured at the beginning of this year, too. He's been set out, I don't know, at least two two or three of the four seasons he's been here just due to injury. So it's nice to see him in there and get some playing time. You know, Dave, Butler very lucky in that they haven't had too many injuries. That's something we'll talk about after this play shotgun formation once again Jacobs back in the pocket he's got a little bit of time being chased down nice mind gets it out to Pico Pico's out past the 30 yard line to the 29 and a Butler first down Jacobs is taking control of this game look at him he's fired up that's the first time I've seen him get so fired up and excited this year and and it, the feeling is spreading through the team you can see it and Butler putting together some nice plays Jacobs getting flushed out of the pocket nearly every play, but he's finding somebody open. And uh, what a great job he's doing. I'm surprised to see him passing so much, but the running game's not going very well. So if they can establish that passing game, that's going to give Mickens a little time to run here. Who could forget the inspirational game he had against Dayton last year with 186 yards and two touchdown passes? Looking to do the same this year. Mickens looking off tackle, picks up a couple of yards. He's probably out to about the 27, 26 yard line. And they're steadily moving the ball up the field still, Dave. One thing we want to talk about here that we mentioned just a second ago, Butler, you know, Holstclaw's injured. But other than that, they've really been lucky with such a with such a limited staff that they haven't had too many injuries this year. Well, of course, in the first game, they lost a very, very important uh, offensive lineman. But since then, they haven't, they haven't really they lost Frank Kosky there in that first game, and he's still out. But uh, since then, they've been fairly successful. Mickens a little upset there. Mickens continues to struggle, and they're going to throw they're a flag. They're going to give him a flag him. there. In the halftime conversation, we'll talk to him. We talked to him a little bit about ego. And while he comes off as a very humble man, that ego kicks in when he's got to play football, and you really need it out there to play that aggressive position. I think maybe we saw a little bit of it right there. He is not pleased. I think maybe he thinks he's getting cheap shotted out there. Well, Mickens, you... Mickens probably maybe a little bit of frustration. He's he struggled. He had that one run that he broke open, but hasn't really seen anything since. And 
He's going to go to the sideline right now and cool off a little bit. Well, hopefully. Hopefully that, that sometimes can ignite a team. Sometimes it takes a leader like that to get really upset and, and let them know that they don't appreciate what's going on out there to get the rest of the team upset and mad, and, and that, in turn, creates a spark that gets something going out there. But you hate to see him lose 15 yards on something like that as well. well. Penalty's a problem again. Now third and 23, shotgun formation. Jacobs has got some time across the middle. Oh, Andrew 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 just let it go right through his hands. Right through his hands as he cut across the middle. and. Lou, no, Lou knows he, he missed that one there. He's shaking his head as he walks back to the huddle, apologizing to Jacobs. And two seniors giving each other a hand there and saying, hey, Jacobs a little frustrated as well. They said, oh, it's all right. Uh, Dave, see next time. The Bulldogs able to move the ball to a point, and then they, they seem right, you know, right around the 30-yard the line. It's a curse right to, there. It's a curse. They seem to hit a... Every hit time a they get that, to that 30-yard line, something bad happens. That's a beautiful punt. Just if it bounces the other way, but it didn't. A beautiful punt by Sean Wood, just a little bit too far, and Valparaiso will get it on its own 20-yard line. I don't know what the deal is with that. Between the 30 and the 20, that area of the football field has not been kind to Butler at all this year. Last week, you saw the big penalties in that area. You saw the fumbles, uh, a lot of bad things happening there, and they just can't seem to break it inside and get down to that end zone. A cursed area, and... Dave, if you if you wanted a cursed area on the on the gridiron, it, it certainly isn't in that red zone. No, that's definitely not where you want to be cursed at. Valparaiso on offense, the give is to Cracknell, and boy, they've been doing a nice job of stopping him at the line today. He's barely up to the line of scrimmage. Well, they're they're definitely going to have to concentrate on shutting down that running game. However, that pass is really scary, and you saw what it did. It led to their touchdown last time, and they've got to play some tight, tight coverage coming into this. It appears though, Dave, that the only thing that needs to happen out there is for the secondary to step up a little bit more, because the defense is doing a nice job of putting pressure on there. You see a Cleveland Indians fan, boy, <laughs> wrapping up that series against Boston. They're doing well for themselves. There goes Cracknell right Cracknell up the middle. found a hole in the middle and he just chugged right on through. He's up to the 39 yard line. I hope they didn't hear me say you need to start watching the pass because I think they watched the pass a little too much that time. They left they left the the seas parted there for Cracknell, man. There was nobody in the middle. He just ran right up through, took advantage of that hole. It was a little bit of a sprint draw there. Uh, he delayed in the backfield, and that allowed the opening to happen there with the offensive line. Man, he had a big gap. Valparaiso, first to ten on their own 38. Nearing the one minute mark of the first quarter. Here's the Play option. action. Nice open and field tackle. gets to the, gets outside, but he is nailed and stopped immediately. Well, Brian, here's what has to happen on the option. This is kind of the commentary <laughs> here going on, but, uh, but uh, as, as look a, at this. The rushing defense of Butler, uh, not very good. They are way behind Valparaiso, 283.7 yards a game. Yeah, that's that's a whole game's worth of offense right there just in rushing. Butler's got to shut that down. And what they're going to have to do with that today is those ends. Like I said at the beginning of the game, they are going to have to be the players on defense. They need to get in the quarterback's face and drill him every time he comes over on that option. Second and three to give us the crack now. He breaks a few tackles. He's out in open field. Kyle Condon's got to get him, and he brings him down. Finally, at the 17-yard line of Butler, crack now breaking it open twice. And now... Valparaiso is again in the red zone and threatening to score. Dave, you know, we saw those 283 yards given up on Rush each game. So untraditional, but they typically have such a strong defensive line. Well, this is going to wrap up the quarter, and, and Butler is going to have to tighten up the reins here on defense. That's why Valparaiso is so explosive. You can hold them for so long, and then they have those weapons that, bam, you know, they're 60 yards down the field in no time. Well, we've completed our first quarter of play. Our score is Valparaiso 7 and Butler 0 here at homecoming 1995. Back with second quarter action after this. You're watching Butler Football 95.
Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic has been the leader in treating sports injuries and orthopedic surgery in northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Doctors Malater, Leland, Toma, Luker, Krushka, and Cave utilize the latest in diagnostic and surgical techniques to treat athletes and enhance their performance. Computerized tracking of injuries and outcomes helps speed the athlete's return to activity. A free sports injury assessment clinic at 8 a.m. each Saturday to local athletes. With locations in Valparaiso, Portage, and Chesterton, Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic is your sports medicine team in northwest Indiana. Sports Medicine Hotline, 462-0700. For one-stop savings on the full Ford line, check out the real Ford Lincoln Mercury. With our great prices and a huge selection of new and used cars, trucks, and vans. We've satisfied over 50,000 customers during our 31 years in business. For real commitment to customer satisfaction has earned us Ford's coveted Distinguished Achievement Award for 20 years. And that commitment extends to our state-of-the-art body shop and our award-winning service department. For saving, satisfaction, and service, check out the real Ford Lincoln Mercury. On US 30 in Valparaiso. Easy to find. Tough to beat. Welcome back to the Butler Bowl second quarter action. Balbo leads at 7-0 here. And they are threatening the score. It's going to be Ozzy Young uh -oh. to pass to the end zone. And an easy, easy catch by number 86, Michael Tolbert. Boy, that's almost that... ironic there. Uh, <laughs> we saw Mickens do it the other way in the same end zone last week. Uh, there must be something with running backs turning into quarterbacks this year. I'll tell you what, we've seen a lot of the half-back pass this year so far. Deja vu, Dave. Boy, you know, we saw as a young rolling out. We thought maybe he was going to go to the outside. All of a sudden, he steps up to throw and hit Michael Tolbert very easily, right in the numbers. It's not hard to tell when they're going to pass because they slow up. <laughs> you know, you don't see Ozzy, Ozzy uh, slow up too much when he's coming in there for the for the score, you know, when he's running the ball, he's putting his head down, ready to go. The extra point up and good for the Valparaiso Crusaders, and now Ozzie Young has another area to add to his total offense Jeez. stat. Porter Memorial Hospital offers the services of experienced healthcare professionals and the most advanced medical technologies. With a comprehensive system of health care services and facilities, Porter Memorial Hospital is truly a leader in Northwest Indiana and a leader in health care. Come on, you're going to make us late. Hey man, what is this to you? What's your problem? He's never a train here. Just go for it. No one's going to see you. The light's probably broken. Yeah, let's go. Come on, Mike. Come on, chicken. Yeah. I wish I hadn't listened to him. So that's, uh, that should be about, what, 40 or 50 yards in penalties right there already. Penalty is a factor last week and this week as well as Andreatis gets the kick. He looks to go outside. And boy, he is clobbered. By number 21, Jamie Yancey. Boy, he was all over Andreatis on that play. Well, what, he was the outside man all the way to the far side of the field. He came sprinting down the side. That, of course, he was set up to do that. And uh, that's what the outside man is. They, they call those a sprint man. They get down the field, and their job is to go straight for that man with the ball. He just came right around the corner and caught, caught him from the backside and completely demolished Andreatis there. Butler's got some acreage to cover with the ball on their own 18-yard line. And we've seen the we've seen the offense drive to a point, but they get close to that red zone and somewhat clam up. Well, 14 to nothing now. Butler can't let Valparaiso get another score here before half. And Butler needs to put some type of points on the board, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown. Desperate for a score in the last four weeks. Only one touchdown offensively as Mickens looks for something, and boy, he is just dragging people with him right after he gets to that the, the line of scrimmage, and he picks up a couple there, but... We saw that big run there, his first play, and since then, he's not been able to get past the line of scrimmage. Um, they need to get him quicker to the outside. The, it, the plays are developing too slow, and he's not having any time to get to the outside and get around the end and is allowing the defense to flow right with him all the way and be in his face when he hits the line of scrimmage. 
It's Jacobs back to pass. He's got plenty of time, and he misses John Knight across the middle. Probably lucky that that one Man, wasn't I, picked off by number three, Enigbo. I held my breath on that one because I just saw John Knight going down in a pile there because he could have been demolished. Man, the defender was setting right there. But uh, Knight is a big play man for the Bulldogs, and hopefully he can get another big 56-yard reception like he had last week. That's going to bring up third down and six. Butler on their own 22-yard line. Not even a minute in to the second quarter of play. Butler down, 14-0. It's Jacobs back to pass again. He's got to roll out. Goes across the middle of the night. A nice pass, and he's out to a Butler first down at the 35-yard line. That's what they're going to have to do. Jacobs, he must have put a slingshot in that arm or something this week. He's rifling today. And in the past games, we haven't seen any pop on the ball from Jacobs. He's dropping back in the pocket now, standing back in the pocket. And uh, let's look at the replay of this. Watch how he rifles that ball to John Knight. Well, and Jacobs seems to be passing better when he's got, when he's got to move around. We're going to forego that replay right now so we can stay with live action. Mickens and Parker in the backfield, John Knight and Usani Dillon wide. Jacobs going to the pass. He looks deep for Dillon. He's got, he's got him. him, and he's out to Valparaiso's 30-yard line oh, after yes. bring, being brought down by number three, Iki Enigbo. You talk about a rifle there. Mickens was, or excuse me, Mickens. Jacobs was on the run, and he was going to the right, running it. And this, that's the hardest way to throw is when you're running. At least he was throwing with his body there. But, man, I don't know how he got that much on the ball. That was just pure strength. That was a shot. Husani making an awesome catch, too. If Jacobs continu can continue to pass like this, Dave, it's going to open things up for Arnold Mickens sooner or later. Is that is that Joe Montana or uh, Toby Jacobs out there? Well, similar in number and, as of right now, similar in playing style. Mickens looking for something, finding absolutely nothing still. He's being nailed right at the line of scrimmage, and it's just his strength that's carrying him out to these two- and three-yard games. Oh, well, games. I'll tell you, I... You hate to see that, too, because here's a guy that's not injury-free. He's playing with some serious injuries, Mickens is, and uh, is having, having a rough time now, getting hit hard. The sun peeks out, hopefully shining upon the Butler offense here as they look to score. Let's see if they go to the air on this play. Mickens, the lone setback. He'll get the carry. He'll drill his way up, maybe out to the 36-yard line. Well, if Butler's... Or 26, rather. Butler's doing a very good job passing. However, they need to mix it up a little bit. They're just run, 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 and then pass to try to get the first down. And that makes it tough. That makes the passing game tougher to establish. Plus, they're, they're knowing what's going to happen because the run's coming play after play after play, then pass. So uh, they need to mix up the offensive calls just a little bit. Well, it's been the pass that's been moving them upfield, and now Jacobs steps back into the shotgun. Andreatus, Knight, and Pico, the wideouts, across the middle and nearly intercepted by number 41, Willie Whittle the third. Now, oh, man, he <laughs> he was standing right there, and it was in his hands, and it just looked like he had it, and he just dropped it on purpose or something almost. Uh, he could have turned and run all the way up the other side of the field with that ball. That pa pass intended for Jim Pico. And Butler will go for it on a fourth down and six. You've got nothing to lose here. You have to. Showing some gall here. Four wide outs. Jacobs has got a lot to choose from. Oh, that's a hit before. Oh, yeah, we're going to throw the play. The play. You bet. You bet. Boy, he hit number 91 right there. Cameron Hatton really laid a hit on John Knight way too early. And they're going to pay for it on this one. Valpo doesn't agree. Boy, if they didn't call that, though, I was really going to think we were cursed because that, that was pretty much outright. Dave Amick irate up here in the... Yeah, I was, I was throwing the flag up here. It, it, it didn't do, do much good for that, but, uh, you know, it, it, could have been, it could have been either way. It was one of those calls that was close enough, but obviously he was hit before the ball got there, and when you interrupt the ability to catch the ball, that, that deserves a flag anytime. Well, Butler played by penalty flags 
thus far in the game, but they finally get one to go their way. First down and 10 now, and this opens up a world of opportunities for the Bulldogs as they have it on Valparaiso's 22-yard line. Well, almost inside of that red zone now. Let's see if they can get it in there and do something with it. They gotta take advantage of this penalty. Valparaiso's giving them the opportunity. Dylan and Knight, the wideout. Stallone set back. Arnold Mickens in at fullback is Ben Parker. Mickens gets the carry, and he crosses out to about the 18-yard line. Now, Mickens cut back that time, and he was able to pick up a couple extra just because of the cutback. That play was designed to go outside. Um, that cutback may be effective because Valparaiso is so quick on the pursuit. If Mickens can hang back there just a step and then cut back the opposite way of flow, he can get some yardage and he utilized that that time. Picked up four yards on that play, and it looked like he picked up nothing. Yeah, that appears they're going to give him three, though, so it's second down and seven. 11.06 left to play in the half. Play action for Toby Jacobs. He fades back. He sees Pico. Pico gets the catch. Out of bounds. And they're going to call it out of bounds, but what a spectacular effort by Jim Pico. And the Butler fans not at all pleased with that call by the officials. Well, this is the most we've heard out of the Butler fans this season. Uh, I believe, I think they ought to give it to the Butler fans, man. They, <laughs> the Butler fans had the call there. They thought he was in inbounds, but uh, obviously to no avail was the booing. So uh, they're going to have to pick it up where they left off. But Jim Pico, he's got great hands. Remember that catch against Drake last year at Drake where he caught the ball. The short guy coming through the middle of three taller ones and came down with it in the end zone. Uh, he can make the big catches. Crucial third down and seven for Butler, needing a score here to shorten that lead of Valpo. And boy, a rough snap going deep and not even close to anyone. Knight, Andriatis, and Paul Flick all back there in the end zone, but that pass was really well off the mark. So Butler once again stunted here in the red zone. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see this passing going on for Butler, but it, it's kind of weird because I've never seen it before. It's normally, you know, nine passes to every, or nine runs to every one pass. And uh, this is kind of exciting. This is making for a neat ball game. The crowd's enjoying it. The cards are on the table. And we'll see here with this snap if Coach LaRose is bluffing here. It is across the middle of the Pico, and it looks like he's out. Good enough for a first down. He's out to the 11, and that that's very close. I believe they're going to give it they're to him. They're going to give yes. him the first down, so another crucial fourth down play. And Maybe game. breaking the curse here, Brian. I don't know. LaRose has been landed on the line, and his boys have come up big for him here on this drive. Now at the really closer to the 12-yard line than at the 11, but good enough for a first. They could still get we can still get one more first down there. You see Jim Pico, Butler's top returning receiver this year. He is fourth on the team in kickoff returns, averaging 13. Obviously, the big guy there, Lou Andrianis, who had some good receptions last week. But Pico really doing an excellent job returning those punts and kickoffs this year. I'll tell you, Brian, this time last year, fourth and six. You would have seen Butler run the ball. Unusual here, the passing. I, I, I'm i excited to see it, though, because it's working. And, and they just have to find something that's going to work for them. Hey, if the pass is working, Mickens really doesn't care. I know he wants to get his yardage, too, but he wants to see the team win more than anything. He's, that's the kind of player he is. So, hey, if the running game's not working for him, fine. He's going to let the guys go with the pass, and it's working very well. Jacobs coming into his own this game. He's, this is the Jacobs of old coming back. Here we see the PFL standings. We're really getting into the heart of the season now. There you see Dayton. Boy, what a spectacular program oh, they wow. have year after year. A little bit of controversy over there uh, in the past week. Uh, you'll discuss that here a, a little bit later on in our program. But Drake at 1-0, San Diego at 1-1, one one, getting the victory against Valparaiso last weekend. Evansville has yet to play in the PFL. Valpo and Butler in the cellar right now with no wins in the PFL, looking for their first against each other here in this game. First down and 10. Butler threatening the score. Jacobs back to pass. He's looking towards the end zone. He's got to overthrow that. 
Pico is taken out by the wall there. He was closely covered by Andre Murphy, the cornerback there. But well, Pico not the fastest receiver out there, but he's definitely got the sure hands. A um, little bit tougher for him to get out and get ahead of people, but he makes good cuts. That's what gets that's what gets him open. We're seeing some some really tight coverage there in the secondary today by Valparaiso. They've got some excellent defensive backs, Brian. Only giving up 156 yards on the pass per game. Second down and 10 now. The give to Mickens. He finds some room and sprawls his way out to about the seven yard line of Valparaiso. Well, if they can get a first down, I, I'm gonna venture to say that they're gonna score because if they get a first down, that's gonna give them first, first down and goal at the one. So if they can't get it in from the one yard line, we have something to be worried about. But, Dave, uh, you, we're doing very well here. You dare not knock on wood here. The, the curse of the red zone, making a bold prediction. I'm making the prediction that the curse is over here. Third down and seven to go, less than 10 to play in the first half. They gave us the Mickens. He finds the outside. He's got some room. He this is it, baby. It. Yeah. Arnold Mickens. His first touchdown since that opening game against Howard Payne. Yeah, I knew it was coming, Brian. It, it was a feeling. I had it. Boy, you could see it open up there as Mickens made his way towards the sideline, and he just got into the end zone. What a leap. A much-needed score for Butler, and this homecoming crowd is on its feet. Look at it. Watch, makes... his, watch his leap here at the end. That's what got him into the end zone. Arnold Mickens working hard and getting his first touchdown since that game against Howard Payne. That outside was open, Brian. That outside was open, and they finally went to it, and they got it. I think all those, all those inside plays were little setups for that one. They were saving that for the big, big victory here. Tom Urich in for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. Great. So, our score now, 14-7. to 7. Butler is pulled to within a touchdown off an Arnold Mickens. Score. So, 9.39 left to play. It'll be Butler to kick off. Dave, things happening quicker this week than last week. Yes, Maybe sir. we're seeing Butler turn things around now. You're seeing a different team out there. They're playing with spirit. They're, they're lively. They're full of energy. They're hitting harder than I've ever seen them hit and, and putting things together. They're playing consistent now. At the Valparaiso Physician and Surgery Center, we're dedicated to delivering high-quality health care services. Located in Chandana Point, the Surgery Center is a high-tech and high-touch outpatient facility with an expertly trained staff. You're welcomed by the lobby's home-like setting where family members can wait. Also available, walk-in urgent care, physician offices, and occupational medicine. We do x-rays, electrocardiograms, low-dose mammography, medical laboratory, and other diagnostic tests. The Valparaiso Physician and Surgery Center and the Family Practice Network of Physicians are affiliated with St. Anthony Medical Center, Crown Point. If you're enjoying this game and you're a business person, you can become part of the action. Just call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions for all the details on becoming a sponsor of upcoming telecasts. Your ad will be seen and heard by the large and growing audience of these local sports telecasts. Just call 477-5803 for all the information. That's 477-5803. And if you'd like a copy of tonight's telecast, advertising, marketing, and promotion, have them available for a small fee. Call 477-5803. I'm still getting his yardage. Of course, leading the PFL. However, uh, nothing else is working. They haven't been able to pass. Remember that performance against Stevens Point? Four of 22 on the pass. And look at today. I bet I, I, I'm really excited to see the statistics of, at halftime of how good uh, the passing game is going for Butler right now. I almost thought Tom Urich forgot how to kick a few, or extra point. <laughs> it's been quite a while since he's got to kick one. And here is Urich. The kickoff deep. It'll be Ozzy Young. He nearly broke one open last time. He'll go up the middle this time. He breaks it open. He's still Look at up. That. Oh my goodness. Really keeping his balance well there. It looked like he was going to be tossed down there at the 40. Stretches it out for an extra six. And he's out. Kyle Condon tackled him there. And the next thing you know, he looked up and Ozzy Young was still going down the field. And he's shaking his head like, what happened? Stretches out for an extra six yards. Man, and that's the kind of explosive player Ozzy Young is. He can, he can make things happen that quick. He's got that explosive speed that you like to see out of a running back. Uh, and Valparaiso is lucky to have him. 
All-American candidate last year, Brian. Here's Ozzie Young to the outside. He won't pass this time, but he'll be chased out of bounds after gaining about two yards. He's out close to the 47-yard line. Burrell, I haven't heard his name called too many times today. I'm sure that Valparaiso is looking to shut off Burrell from getting any more tackles. Uh, Burrell completely blown out of that play, but his teammates took care of it. Burrell had an outstanding game last week against Drake, didn't he, Brian? Very, a very silent game. Uh, we didn't, you didn't hear too much about Burrell throughout the game, but he silently collected 15 tackles. They give to crack now, and he is smashed. Met by Ron Griswold at the line. Ryan Vermillion actually was there. Vermillion, the senior, doing a great job. And here last week was Drake. They've got a they got a handy lead against Evansville. 10-15 left in the second there. 15-0. Drake leads it. One of the PFL leaders looking to hold on to that. Their big test will come against Dayton later on in the season. It's Browder back to pass. A oh, no. The screen. The screen. The screen. Out to the 50. To the 45, and he keeps going down the sideline, and he is all, all the way to Butler's 32-yard line. Butler First hasn't down. seen that screen too many times this year, Brian, and the young guys completely got sucked in on that. You got to know when to hold your ground, and it's so tempting when you see that quarterback standing back there like a sitting duck, and you just want a piece of him so bad, and that's what happened there. They all, all the defenders went right after the quarterback and left that whole side of the field wide open. Cracknell got some speed too. He's, for as big as he is, he's really got. I'd like to see what his 40 time is because he can really move the ball. Robert back to pass again. Shows such poise there in the backfield. He gets that one complete out to number 81, Daryl Jackson, the tight end. Craig Hauser, nice job on coverage. He was right with him, as, and he was tackling him right as he was catching the ball. Just couldn't get the hand in there and break the ball away. Browder looks so smooth back there. He's, he does. He's not. He doesn't get excited. He, Browder has a lot of poise. A lot of poise. Feet are steady. Eyes constantly scanning the field in front of him. He gives Little that draw. one off to Cracknell, and he's just out to what looks to be the 19-yard line. So Travis now, Campbell, nice job on the tackle there. He held his ground and was able to bring down Cracknell, man, because he had a wide open lane if if, uh, if he didn't stop him. So nice job by Travis Campbell, 6'1", 220 sophomore, left tackle for the Dogs. Valparaiso now enters the red zone. They've scored twice on two opportunities within the red zone, so Butler looking for a big stop here. It's Ozzie Young looking Look at Burrell. to go outside. Oh, just misses. Some nice blocks being thrown, and finally, number 54, and that is Ryan Vermillion. Vermillion having a very good game so far. We just mentioned him earlier, coming up with a big stop on Cracknell. The senior getting some good playing time this year. Look at the replay of this. I'll tell you, Adam Burrell just about got him. Look at Burrell with the pursuit there. Just misses. Ozzy jumps out of the grasp there of Burrell. Ryan Vermillion, a crucial tackle there, but Valpo on the three-yard line of Butler. and it was such an explosive offense. It's tough to hold them out this close. They go to the wishbone back there. Now in the option. Option and Browder will easily trot in. And you really don't know what to do in that situation. I mean, with with such strong running, Browder can run it really well, and Oz, Ozzie Young can run it really well. It's hard to it's hard to figure out who to go for. Well, they they're supposed to know, and I'm sure they do know, Brian. Every guy has their own man that they key on. And there was enough defenders out there, but not every one of them did their job. And one guy is supposed to hit the quarterback. One guy is supposed to hit the running back. One guy is supposed to hit the lead back. It didn't happen. And you got to have execution on defense to stop that option. The latest state-of-the-art computers, technicians trained to handle the newest advancements in automotive technology. 
Complete car service from brakes and shocks to fuel injection and emission repairs. A service staff with over 100 years of combined experience. And all at low competitive prices. At Co-op Car Care, they can tune your engine, computer balance and rotate your tires, full tire and wheel alignment, replace your brakes and much, much more. Whatever your car care needs, your answer is Co-op Car Care on Roosevelt Road, Valparaiso. Take One Video is not just another video store featuring over 10,000 titles. Tuesday is Senior Citizens Day. Wednesday is Ladies' Day, and Thursday, Two for One Thursday. Plus, with the Take One Video punch card, you'll get a free movie every time you rent 10. Call 462-0098 to get guaranteed reservation on your favorite movies. VCR repair available. Take One Video, 6 Morgan Boulevard, Valparaiso. Just in, Pulp Fiction, Major Payne, Losing Isaiah, Kiss of Death, and Billy Madison. And he needs to make the point, stress the point that the first man they need to hit, no matter what, even if he has the ball or not, they've got to hit Bowers with the, the quarterback because they got to let him know that they're there waiting for him. And that's, that'll stop the option if they hit the quarterback. Here's John Knight. John Knight looking to re receive it, and he is tripped up at the 29-yard line, and looked like that one was by number 24. Jeff Zudasek. Hey, Knight's hobbling a little bit. He got hit earlier, and he hobbled off the field. And Seems like he's really favoring his left leg there. Uh, he's going to stay on, though. Butler did a nice job of marching the ball up the field last time. We'll see if they can do it again. They've got the ball on their own 30-yard line with 6.41 left to play. A lot of passing going on in that last drive. This time they'll give it to Mickens. Mickens scraping up every nook and cranny he can find out there. Is he is not getting any holes at all they're still pushing it back to the inside i you know obviously i can't call the plays but everybody's seen that it's worked when they go outside and and i know you have to mix it up between the inside and outside but they're going inside too many times and not getting any yardage not picking up any yardage on that play actually he's picking up two second and eight now they flip it out to him get him outside, go outside. There. nice cutback by mickens he stretches himself out to about the 43. First down. That should be good enough for a first down. That's what I was talking about. You have to get to the outside. They gave him that quick pitch and allowed Mickens the time. See, you give him a four or five yard head start when you get that pitch out there. He's at full stride when he gets the ball. And that gives him enough speed to get around that end. He ended up cutting back there because he saw that hole. And when you get him outside like that also, that does give him the time to read a little bit better. And he found where the hole was that time, cut it up for the first down. Mickens able to pull himself forward, but also can cut back really well as well. He's got good footwork. And boy, it takes two defenders to bring him down there, and he is out close to the 50 as he's chased out of bounds. Boy, he just never gives up, though, does he? He, he hits, or he gets hit, keeps running, keeps the legs pumping all the time. He's just so hard to stop. A man with an insatiable appetite to win. He gets a good seven on that play. Second down and three. And Dave, you know, every time we've seen Mickens go to the outside, he's picked up remarkably better, remarkable better yardage than when he goes down the middle when we saw him get the touchdown by going to the outside. That's right. Jacobs rolls out. Flips it out to Andreatis. Andreatis is out to a first down. He's still going. still going. Hit two or three times there and finally brought down at about the 43-yard line. Small in stature, but a big play man he is. That's Lou Andreatis, sweet Lou as he's known on the team. He's kind of the emotional leader. He keeps everybody in, in good spirits around the team. And when the team's down, he'll come up and he's always got a good joke. Watch this replay, Lou coming from that slot position. Little dump pass there by Jacobs. And look at Andreatis keeping those feet going, just picking up an extra yard or two. Jacobs with a sweet little pass to Sweet Lou there, and that was enough for a first down. Jacobs back to pass again. He scrambles. He's going to have to keep it himself. He's out to about what looks to be about a six-yard gain. So that'll bring up about a second and four. Not bad for a broken play. Jacobs showing a great deal of poise today in the backfield. He's been able to elude rushers and, and get off some good passes. And when he doesn't have anybody open, he's willing to keep it himself. The quarterback sneaks. Second and four now. Nearing the four and a half minute mark. Left to play here 
in the first half. There he goes to the, to the outside. He's down the sideline and chased out of bounds at about the 28. So yeah. Mickens, when he gets to the outside, he's been successful. He's there. And he's starting to rack up the yards now. I, I don't, it was, it was almost like I had a headset down there to Coach Dorn calling the plays. <laughs> he's moving to the outside now. I love to see that then. Uh, but obviously you have to do that. Watch Mickens here getting the outside, getting the corner. These those inside plays they've been running have set up this outside game. Uh, Valparaiso King on that inside, inside running play, and now Butler able to go outside. So that was a good, that was a good setup by uh, Coach Dorn there. And once Mickens gets all that muscle going that fast, all you can do is push him out of bounds. And a refreshing change for Arnold. They're being hammered going up the middle for most of the game. He is starting to stretch himself out. And now with less than four and a half to play, we're at first and 10 at Valparaiso's 28 yard line. Valparaiso up by two touchdowns here. Butler, if they can get some more points on the board and close that gap just a little bit, you know, bring it, bring it within 10 or something. At 21 to seven, now your score. If they can get her inside there and, and pick up six points or hopefully seven, and that'll make things pretty interesting going into the second half. They take a break there with a timeout. Now it's back to business as Jacob stands in the shotgun formation. Four receivers wide. We'll watch the play unfold. He looks deep to the end zone to Andreatis. And Andreatis. Give it to him. Yes, sir. The catch. Oh, what an what unbelievable catch. catch by Lou Andreatis. Over on his back, manages to hold on to it. And another Butler touchdown from the 28-yard line. Well, number two, Saul Shaheed from Valparaiso had a hold of that ball as well. It seemed like they both caught it simultaneously. Look at the replay then. Look at him come down with it. And Lou Andreas just rips it away from him, and he says, this ball is mine. We had to wait a little bit on the call of that. It looked like he might have bobbled it towards the end, but Andreas is doing a nice job of holding on to it. And the Butler offense coming up big. The first, by, the first touchdown by Arnold Mickens, the second by Andreatis, and now Yurik will step in to complete the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So that takes us to 21-14, Butler. Hey, Crusader fans, for the largest selection of Valparaiso University clothing, gifts, and memorabilia, make sure you visit the all-new University Book Center next to the Ark on the campus of Valparaiso University. At the University Book Center, you'll find sweatshirts and tees, sweaters, pennants, steins, and mugs, and many other VU Crusader items. Show your support for the Crusaders with official VU selections from the University Book Center, now in their new location next door to the Ark on the campus of Valparaiso University. The University Book Center, VU's official gift and bookstore. Of the thousands of investments available today, some of the most exciting are right here in the Midwest. Where do you get research and advice on them? Many Wall Street firms overlook these corporations. But Robert W. Baird & Company has an international reputation for research, and Baird closely tracks these and 300 other corporations, publishing their recommendations in timely research reports. For more information on what Baird Research can do for you, call Baird in Valparaiso at 464-4906. Baird. Better results from better research. Very few seniors on the team, but the two who have scored today, both seniors in Mickens and Andreatis, and that shows that senior leadership really kicks in, and that makes a big difference. 21-14 now, four minutes left to play. The Butler offense really playing well in the first half. The defense still looking to click here as Valparaiso has been able to score on three of their drives. It's Ozzie Young. He's got some room. Boy, you know, you try to trip him up, but somehow he's able to keep his balance and stretch out for a couple more yards. This time, he gets out to about Butler's 38-yard line. But I'll tell you what, uh, Ozzy Young has had such good runbacks every kickoff that Valparaiso has not had bad field position any time today on offense. And uh, Ozzy Young does such a good job at putting that arm down, keeping himself balanced, and picking up an extra three to four yards every time. Butler needs to hit him hard early. Averaging 21 yards every kickoff return and doing even more in the offense. Here is Young with a short pass from Browder just barely out to the line of scrimmage as Browder was forced back. We've got flags down. 
Boy, we got flags on two separate little plays here. I think they're going to be on Butler, both of them. I think the first one's going to be roughing the passer, Brian. If I saw that play correctly, Travis Campbell, the um, man playing left tackle who we talked about earlier, he got a little late hit on, he wanted to get a piece of Browder and let him know he was, he was there. And unfortunately, he did a little late, so we'll see what they call here. They're having quite a conference down there. That usually means there's, there's a couple things they have to see how they're going to call it. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the foul ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the foul ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the foul ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Yamaha makes a four-wheel drive ATV for everybody. everybody. But with the most versatile line of four-wheel drive ATVs to choose from, you'll find a rugged, reliable Yamaha made for you. It figures he'd pick the Big Bear. They picked up, what, 30 yards on that, Brian? 30 yards, and they didn't even have to get anywhere to anything for it. A 30-yard game and attributed to the Butler defense after a couple of personal fouls and Butler's Sort of sporting an attitude out there today. We've seen that. Sure are. More than more than one of those penalties so far this afternoon, and really costing them there. You don't want to give Valparaiso any more yards than they get reverse. themselves. The reverse. reverse. The reverse, going to number 86, Michael Tolbert. Decent job by number 20, Joe Miles. There, uh, the replacement defensive back who came in for Ely, came in off the bench. He held his ground there, but still they picked up five yards on that. And Brian. You just mentioned you can't give any yards up to a team like Valparaiso. They're too potent on offense, too many weapons. Every yard that you give them just puts them that much closer to scoring quickly. Second down and five now, under three minutes to play in the first half. They give it out to Ozzie Young, and he's brought down in a quick fashion by the Butler defense after picking up maybe two yards on that play. Mr. Burrell on that tackle. Burrell holding his ground. He knew who had the ball. There was a nice write-up in the Indianapolis Star on Adam Burrell. I don't know if you read that or not, uh, Brian, but they talked about his status as a linebacker and how he's really came in and uh, played very well for the Bulldogs this season. Making the move from defensive back, which he's always been, to linebacker, he begged Coach LaRose. And Coach LaRose said, no, you're too small, you're too small. But finally, he pestered him and left and let him go. One of the option play to give it out to Ozzie Young, and he's out close to a first down as he gets out very close to the 24-yard line. We'll see where the spot is. Favorable, we'll see if they bring out the sticks or not to measure this one out. Burrell once again on that tackle, but enough for the first down, just barely. So this is gonna give Valparaiso the ball inside the 25-yard line at the 24 with a first down. First down and 10. For the Valparaiso Crusaders, our score 21-14. The Butler offense putting the points on the board this week, but the defense desperately needs a stop. Less than two minutes to play here in the first half. Inside Again, handoff. Cracknell. Cracknell finds a couple of cracks, works his way out to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, that, that was a little bit of a counter there. He stepped back, stepped back inside, took the handoff inside, and... Uh, Luckily, that play didn't go a lot farther than it, than it could have. There was a huge hole in there. Cracknell having a whale of a game so far, Brian. Really on a roll, 80 yards last week against San Diego in the PFL opener. And has really made a few very big plays this afternoon. There's the option. They There's didn't the option. hit. Oh, boy. Router getting out to about the six-yard line. That's going to be 
good enough for a first down, well good enough for a first down. Boy, I, I know Coach LaRose is disappointed because how many times can you make the same mistake? That option coverage is not that hard. Everybody take their man and stick to him, and they're not doing it. And you've got to do it every play. The defensive end is non-existent on that left side. That's David Bowers. He's, you know, he's done a he's done a pretty good job in a backup role for Holskall uh, this week, but. I'll tell you, he's got to be there. One thing you hear coaches talk about time and time again is you got to have the coverage there, and you've got to hit the, hit the man with the ball, and they've been unable to do that so far as they send that one up the middle. Not getting much. The defensive line doing a nice job of closing up the holes. Less than a minute to play now, and Valparaiso will look to use as little time as they can in trying to get this one into the end zone. I noticed, Brian... As I was talking there, Pulse Claw is in the game. After that shoulder injury last week, he's back in the game. So, uh, David Bowers was reported to have started today, but Pulse Claw is in the game there at the, the left end position. It's nice to see him back out there after the injury. Kind of surprising. Very surprising. Everything that was indicated to us said that Pulse Claw would definitely be sitting out here homegoing. But A lot of pride here, Brian, very... and, and I think that no matter what, you can be hurting really, really bad, and this homecoming game brings out the most in you and brings out the fact that you, that you just don't want to sit on the side and watch your, watch your buddies play while you're sitting on the sideline. You want to be out there and help them out and help them do a victory the best you can, and, and Holst is a competitor. And uh, I, I expected to, to see him out on the field, but not, not on the field playing. I expected him to see him on the sideline in pads, but not out there. Good old-fashioned determination here at homecoming 1995. Valparaiso threatening to score again at Cracknell. A nice play action at Cracknell, but the pass, in fact, goes across the middle to number 81, Daryl Jackson, the tight end. Let Boy, me tell you what, this, had us fooled up here, Dave. this guy's this guy's a truck, man. This this Daryl Jackson, number 81, who just caught that touchdown, 6'1", 250 pounds. And he is very slow. I've seen him on these pass routes, but it didn't take much. That tight end pass is always effective in near that end zone. Here's Hatton for the extra point. And it is no good. Wide right, or wide left, says the official. The legendary comfort of Birkenstock shoes begins with the original Birkenstock contoured footbed to ensure proper support, a firm walking surface to improve circulation and reduce fatigue. The Birkenstock toe bars encourage the natural gripping motion of your feet and the deep heel cups absorb shock and stabilize heels. Whether you work in a hospital, laboratory, or restaurant, Birkenstock has the footwear designed to alleviate discomfort, stress, and fatigue associated with walking or standing on hard surfaces. Birkenstock, the original comfort shoe, available at the sports shop, Valparaiso. You're invited to visit beautiful downtown Valparaiso. In downtown Valparaiso, you'll find an assortment of unique shops and businesses. Everything from fine restaurants to quality men's and women's clothing. From distinctive gifts to gourmet delis, from antiques to convenient banking. It's available in downtown Valparaiso. Have you visited downtown Valparaiso lately? If not, you'll be pleasantly surprised at all that downtown has to offer. Come see us in downtown Valparaiso. This invitation from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association. If they can come back and, you know, maybe not, hopefully they can put some points on the board here before halftime. However, they're not out of it going into half. And uh, the way they're moving the ball today, you may see some good things. And a deep kick to Lou Andreatis. He'll run it out of the end zone. Looks for some room. Avoids a couple attackers. A nice spin move. But he can only stretch his way out to the 20. He might have been better off just to down it in the end zone. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing there, but Lou Andreatis, he's, he's got the ability to break it open, I guess you, you never know unless you try, and, and Lou Andreatis is not one to take the down. <laughs> he's going to go for it no matter what. He's just not getting the... He's, he's just not getting the blocks today to, to really break one open. Butler, with 40 seconds left to play, look for Jacobs to go deep. He's had some success with it, as we saw in that 28-yard touchdown. Shotgun formation opens things up for Arnold a little bit. He pounds his way out to about the 25, a pickup of about five yards. No huddle offense here, Brian. Butler's going for the score. They're not wasting any time. They're running the two-minute drill. Right now, it has to be the 22-second drill. The pass 
So Arnold is tipped up in the air. It will be ruled incomplete, and that will stop the clock for a moment. But it will bring up a third down and five for the Butler Bulldogs. 18 seconds left to play in the first half. I want to remind you, coming up at the half, we'll have live for you the 50-yard line with Drew Johnson. He'll recap all the scores from last week and tell us what's going on in the PFL today. Not a busy day for the PFL, but he'll update us on what he can. And we'll also have that exclusive look at Arnold Mickens. 18 seconds. Here's the shotgun formation. Jacobs rolls out. Oh, look at that. by tacklers. And he's oh, got to force boy. a pass short of number 10, Jim Pico. And I'm telling you what, he had three receivers open on that. Did you hear the Valparaiso coaches yelling, get out there, get out there, get out there, because they had they had uh, three wide receivers lined up for Butler on the near side, and and they didn't have the coverage out there. There we see at the half again, last week's PFL scores. And a man named Arnold Mickens, and he has had one touchdown here in the first half, but... The Butler defense really needing to step it up in the second if they want to walk away with their ninth straight homecoming victory. It's Sean Wood back the punt, only 11 seconds left, but those 11 seconds could be more than enough for a returner Just like Ozzie Young. Blocked. And boy, that was almost blocked, but it's going to be downed by number 71, Jason Blasnick. <laughs> Only two seconds remaining on the clock, and we are almost ready to go into halftime here. And the Butler offense producing something they had an extremely difficult time with there for much of the beginning of the season, but they've picked things up quite nicely. Now it's just a matter of the defense coming up with some big stops, Dave. It sure is. I'll tell you, Brian, I would have liked to have seen what might have happened had Toby Jacobs had some time on that last offensive play with those three guys 50 yards downfield. Um, Excellent play, but the defense here has got to step it up and, and stop stop the Valparaiso offense in the second half. Well, Valparaiso drops the knee on that one, and that takes us to halftime. It'll be Valparaiso going into the locker room with a 27-14 lead over Butler. Twenty-seven fourteen. Valparaiso leads as we enter into the second half. And here is number seven, Craig Fanton. On a very short kick by Butler, he picks it up and gets it out to about the 42-yard line. Dave, uh, some excellent halftime festivities there. Didn't have time to get to the statistics. Let's take a quick look here. First downs, uh, Butler in advantage there. The rushing yards aren't there, but boy, what a great passing half, 150, 150 yards. Uh, Toby Jacobs is 9 of 19, not a very great statistic, but a lot of yards there for uh, Toby, doing a great job today. No turnovers in the first half, Dave, but 64 yards of penalties really hurt him in the, in the first half. They sure did. Here's the hand off. There's the option. Here's the option play. Look at this, Pulse Claw. This is what we talked about all game. Holsclaw has to take that quarterback as he comes around. And Holsclaw did his job that time. I'm sure Coach LaRose has something to say about the uh, first half coverage of that option. They came out and handled it very well. No gain, Brian. Nice job by the Bulldogs. A nice tackle by a man who was not even supposed to play. I do notice he didn't throw his shoulder into that one. So he's doing a great job, though. Jim Holsclaw, the sophomore, defensive end. 253 total yards for Butler, 213 for Valpo, and as Cracknell makes his way out to about a three-yard gain, gets it out to about the 44-yard line. Brian, look at this statistic uh, pass receptions. Butler has hit three passes to Lou Andriatis, two to Hassani Dillon, two to John Knight, and two to Jim Pico. What a balanced attack there. All four receivers have caught at least two passes. Of course, Rob Rezo not doing bad as well. Heinrich has three receptions, all of them coming on the first drive. Here is Browder, back to pass. He looked for Ozzy Young, but Young couldn't quite get that high to get it. Not bad coverage by number 20, Joe Miles. As he grounds Young before he can really get that catch that pass, but some good coverage there by defense, 
by the defense. Ron Griswold putting the pressure on him that time. I just love Ron Griswold. My type of player. Here comes the streakers. We knew it was coming. It was only a matter of time, and here they go. They're going for the full 100-yard run here. All the way to the end zone. Oh, no. And over the wall they go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you saw it live here on WTVU. And Blue Adrianus is using it to his advantage as he struggles oh out my. to the 50 to the 48-yard line of Valparaiso. So pandemonium out on the field right now as the streakers <laughs> make their way all the way downfield. A 100-yard play for the two streakers. That's the longest in recorded history at Butler. <laughs> Last year they had an 80-yard run. This year they go the full 100. The Unbelievable full play. And, and Lou Andriatis built on that. <laughs> he took it all the way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so so along with the along with the along with the streakers about 25 extra yards there so that's about 125 yard play with the streakers and Andreatus and, and something else it's new for the streakers we had two of them at once what they were running in tandem that's that's a new one for the Butler streakers what fantastic camera coverage by that too oh, as Toby Jacobs throws one off the mark intended for John Knight Boy, what a what a way to start out the second half. Butler with a nice stop. The streakers run the length of the field. And you know, Dave, the the amazing <laughs> thing about it was its play just resumed as if nothing was happening. And I'll tell you what, I know the Butler police officers were probably waiting at that north end of the field because they always enter from the north entrance of the field. They came from the south end. They came out of nowhere. I don't even know how they got in here, but they came from the opposite end. Hey, well, him. here's a real runner, Arnold Mickens. He makes his way out to the 40-yard line. A pickup. Pickup of close to seven yards on that play, seven or eight yards. Things getting interesting this second half so far, Brian. It leads off of the streakers and Andreatis. I didn't think Andreatis was going to come down on that punt or on that kickoff return. He would get hit and he'd keep up and he'd get hit and he'd keep going, keeping those feet going and entire. Centra has a great deal of room, a very smooth ride, and a cabin that's so quiet, it might surprise you. The Nissan Sentra. Uh, we got it. They're stuffing that inside. There's nothing there. There hasn't been yet today. But, of course, probably the same tactic as they went... Uh, they had second, or excuse me, second quarter of the last half. Go inside, then go outside. You got to bounce it back and forth, in and out. Let's see what happens here. Fourth and one. Butler was one of one and fourth down conversions in the first half. Let's see if they can continue to perform in that particular area. Jacobs has got to take a timeout. Probably not a bad idea. You. Want to make sure you've got your signals straight in a situation like this. Obviously, this we a, don't know what they were going to call there, but uh, they were set up for a run. They they brought in the fullback there, and and obviously they're going to run usually, I guess I should say, out of that formation. But Valparaiso had quite a lineup there. Coach LaRose talking there to his team from the sidelines, and Valparaiso though had the setup for the for the run. I don't think Toby Jacobs liked what he saw there. Valparaiso brought five guys up on the line and had their backers stacked in there. Uh, they weren't going to run, obviously, on, on Valparaiso. Let's we'll see if they go to the pass here. Fourth down and two. Same setup, Brian. A fourth down conversion that might make or break Butler here if they get it. It's going to, it'll definitely spark them, maybe get them a score. If they don't, it puts Valparaiso in very good field position. Mickens is to the outside. He He's makes his way it. out to the first down. He's out to about the 35-yard line. Big play by Sir Arnold. There you see Arnold being congratulated by number 70, Jamie Ford, one of the, I guess you could say, upperclassmen of the offensive line, only a sophomore, but he is one of the most experienced out there. First down and 10 now on the Valparaiso 45. Parker 
and Mickens in the backfield to give us to Mickens. He finds a nice hole up the middle. Had to leap over somebody. I believe there's going to be a there's going to be a penalty there, as far as uh, maybe a face mask. Let's see what the call is. Mickens managed to get out to about the 31, so that would be a pickup of about four yards. There it is. And the call is against Valparaiso. So look at Mickens there. He says, "Yes, sir. It's against him. He knew it." He was calling it for the referees, I believe, there as well. Mickens not too pleased with a couple of the penalty calls in the first half, but finally gets one to go his way, so that's going to help out, out Butler. But in the first half, Dave, we talked about how, how crucial penalties were. Butler was 64 in the first half. Valparaiso only with nine yards of, of penalties. That's, that's a huge differential there. You think 64 yards of offense they had taken away. And that's, that's absolutely huge. And the officials need a second here to clarify something. I'm not sure. Ben Parker really opened that play up uh, for Mickens. Finally doing a nice job there. He's, he's a strong guy. And uh, he kicked out the end, which opened up that play. There you take a look at LaRoe's headset, bringing it up off his ear there so he can hear the call. Kim LaRoe is a great coach for Butler. Uh, obviously disappointed this year. We take a look at Mickens' mileage. Set an NCAA Division I AA record for single game rushing attempts with 56 and a Butler single game rushing record with 295 yards versus Valpo. You gotta wonder if they could have given him the ball just one more time to break that 300 mark, but boy, what a, what a, what a spectacular season last year. And it's been down considerably, but still having a good season this year. Sure has. There, he, to most of the nation. there you see the quarterback Jacobs roll out one more time. Jacobs rolls out. And they ran out successfully in the first half, and that's something you can't run every other down, but it's, it's good to run it one time a half. And Jacobs picking up enough to move the chains. That's going to be enough for a Butler first down, and they had 15 first downs in the first half, so... The Butler offense really able to to move the ball up the field. It's just a matter of the defense being able to stop this multi-threat offense of Valparaiso. The give to Mickens, he's knocked down in the backfield. Actually, he may have he may have gained one yard on that play out close to the 22. Brian, once again, the statistics for Butler almost seem in their favor. Seems like they should be winning. And the big one, once again, time of possession. Butler had the ball nearly five minutes more than Valparaiso did. 17 minutes and 23 seconds to 12 minutes and 37 seconds. And it's, it's, it just seems so weird that Butler having the ball all that time and not getting as many points on the board as they should. But that's been the case all year. Looking downfield, John, John Knight. Knight, touchdown! Nice look by Toby Jacobs. He goes deep from the 23-yard line, right into the hands of number seven, John Knight, and that takes our score 27-20. Valpo only up by a touchdown now. Dave, the pass has been very good from about 28 to 20 yards out today. It's been very good for Butler. John Knight, that being his third catch of the day, and definitely his biggest there with that touchdown reception. John Knight, I'm telling you what, he has just been all over the field this year for the Bulldogs. Anytime that a big pass has happened, it seems like it's been to John Knight. He's got the hands. He's the hot man this year for the Bulldogs at receiver position. Urich to pull them within six, and he splits them, and our score is 27 to 21. Ten and a half left to play in the third quarter. Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic has been the leader in treating sports injuries and orthopedic surgery in Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Doctors Malader, Leland, Toma, Luker, Krushka, and Cave utilize the latest in diagnostic and surgical techniques to treat athletes and enhance their performance. Computerized tracking of injuries and outcomes helps speed the athlete's return to activity. A free sports injury assessment clinic at 8 a.m. each Saturday to local athletes. With locations in Valparaiso, Portage, and Chesterton, Valparaiso Orthopedic Clinic is your sports medicine team in Northwest Indiana. Sports Medicine Hotline 462-0700.
for one-stop savings on the full Ford line. Check out the real Ford Lincoln Mercury. With our great prices and a huge selection of new and used cars, trucks, and vans. We've satisfied over 50,000 customers during our 31 years in business. Burrell's commitment to customer satisfaction has earned us Ford's coveted Distinguished Achievement Award for 20 years. And that commitment extends to our state-of-the-art body shop and our award-winning service department. For savings, satisfaction, and service, check out the real Ford Lincoln Mercury. On US 30 in Valparaiso. Easy to find. Tough to beat. The Butler defense showing they can stop Valparaiso there on that first possession. They need to continue to do so throughout the second half. And, you know, Dave, never count this Butler team out. We saw That's right. We they saw them down last year at Dayton, making a nice comeback. And they halted Ozzy Young rather quickly there, something they look, haven't look, been able to do look at that. so far today. Sweet Lou Andre is getting some sweet revenge on Ozzy Young there. He put a nice stick on him. And Lou is usually on the receiving end of most of those hits off the kickoff return. This time he got down there and put a nice hit on Ozzie Young. Stopped Ozzie Young farther back than any other time uh, so far this game. He's always gotten out to the 40 or better on those kickoff returns, but they stopped him inside the 30 this time. This, is, I believe, is the deepest Valparaiso has been in their own territory today. First and 10 at their own 29. It's Browder back to pass. He's looking deep downfield, and he gets Heinrichs. And Heinrichs is all the way to Butler's 25-yard line. He had no one on him, Dave. Completely a, a situation of blown coverage there. Number 20, I, yeah, 25, I believe, for Butler on that. Uh, there we see Heinrichs is just yes. no one even close to him, and they managed to drag him out of bounds there. Well, I couldn't tell who lost the coverage on that. Um, that was, that was a situation where there could have been any one of three guys on him and nobody took him. So, a tough situation for Butler, giving From up the From their own 29 to Butler's 25, and Cracknell stretches his way out into the red zone at about the 18-yard line. So, the big play really hurting the Butler defense today. Browder right there doing a nice job of being patient in the pocket. Saw Heinrichs wide open and hit him right in the numbers that with that pass. absolute bomb, Brian. That, that baby was in the air a good 50 yards. Showing he has an arm is Bowders today. Cracknell, the lone back. There's another draw. They're going to that draw play after play, and it's Crack very now. Getting away from tacklers, he was wrapped up a couple of times, but just a just a case of some fundamentals going wrong there, Dave. And Terrible Cracknell, tackling. Cracknell makes his way into the end zone, and boy, it's just it's an emotional roller coaster down there on that sideline, Dave. They go from getting a big touchdown with John Knight there being pumped up. Browder takes him right back out of the game with that big bomb, and now Valparaiso leads 33-21. The Butler cheerleaders, plenty to cheer about on offense, but the defense is continuing to struggle. And it hasn't been the run defense, it's been the pass defense. And here we see the wishbone again for Valparaiso. They're going for two off that option. And there it is, the big stick. That's what they have to have, but dang on. They can't stop Ozzy Young. That was number 20, Joe Miles, doing a nice job of sending Browder to the turf. And boy, they needed to do that, so. Well, they did They did the right thing. Here's the replay. See the big stick on him, but he gets the ball away to number 29. That would be Jody Hart, 5'9", 180-pound sophomore, tailback there. I'll tell you what, they've got a multitude of weapons on that team. Jody Young, a name we haven't heard yet today. But, you know, Browder, man. Browder getting stuck pretty good there, but a nice presence of mind to get rid of the ball. 35-21 now, and the deficit is two touchdowns again. And boy, the, for 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 weeks and weeks there, Dave, we, the Butler offense struggled to get the ball into the end zone, and, and now they're doing it with a great deal of regularity. But they're letting up a touchdown every time they give one. And and uh, the, the the rush is something that has plagued this defense time after time, game after game this season, and it's really. It's really showing through here, and what's even more surprising is the pass has been so effective for Valpo, and this is a this is a Butler secondary that typically only gives up about 88 yards on the pass a game. 
they're just tearing apart the secondary play by play, and and the run has has essentially been shut down for the most part for Valparaiso, but uh, that pass is just killing him. And Heinrich, that's his that was his first reception since the first drive of the game. And man, a big one it was to set up that touchdown. Sweet Lou making his way out to about the 30. Nine and a half left to play here in the third quarter, 35-21. Tell you, Lou looks a little sore there. He's got hit hard several times today, but Lou's a warrior. He'll stay in there no matter what. Valparaiso and their two wins is taking those wins by simply outscoring their opponents. Their defense tends to give up an inordinate amount of points a game. As you see, Arnold Mickens struggling to get out to about the 31. They, they tend to give up they tend to give up quite a few points comparatively to other teams, but their offense is just so potent that they can outscore their opponents. So, and it's and it's definitely something they've been able to do against Butler here so far this afternoon. I'll tell you what the biggest thing that's that's not letting Mickens run now is uh, the fact that the offensive line is just coming off the ball so slowly. They're not getting that lead foot out to cut off the flow of the defense. Once again, look at that. Not able to get his man. He let, that was number uh, 94, Atten there, the tight end, didn't get his man cut off and the, let him come inside there and, and wrap Mickens up. They've got to do a better job and come off the ball quicker in order to be successful. Adam Zolvinsky getting the first arm around Mickens there as he tried to work his way up the field. Went out at third down and six. Butler has it on its own 33 yard line. We got an update for you from the PFL 15-0 in the third quarter now. Drake over Evansville. Uh -oh. Jacob's doing a nice job of breaking loose that that rusher. And he gets himself out. Put first it up down. for a first down out of the 38. Jacobs has really been the the lifeblood of this offense so far this afternoon. He's making he's making some nice gains off of broken plays and that seems to be the best offense for Butler besides the passing game is broken plays. That's about the only time they're getting any running room. Uh, not establishing anything for Mickens. There's a couple girls enjoying the game today. First down and 10 at their own 44-yard line. The Bulldogs trying to continue to score in hopes that the Butler defense will be able to shut down Valpo sooner or later. And Mickens finds a small crack. You give him an inch and he'll take a few yards and he took about four on that play right there. That should bring up about a six down and second down and six. Arnold Mickens. It's second five. A man no doubt continually beaten game after game, but such an in such an intense drive within him. He, comes out game after game, play after play, and continues to work it for Butler. Second down and five now. Jacobs, nice pass to Pico. Good there goes for Pico. First down. He's avoiding tacklers. And a nice job there by number eight, Tim Risen, to just nip the heel of Pico. Pico, but a big a game. Of a run there. He really was cutting and slashing there as he was, he broke a couple tackles en route to a big pickup. As you look at the Butler sideline there. And Pico, that pass not covering a whole lot of ground, but Pico doing some nice footwork. They'll give it off to Mickens. He's looking to the outside. He nice cutback. One man. He's got one man to beat. He could go all the way. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Mickens. His second of the day. There's no stopping him after you get him past the line. Big touchdown run for Arnold Mickens from the 27-yard line. That marks the third straight score for Butler when they were not in the red zone. They, you get it in between that 30 and 20-yard line, Dave, and they're really working the ball well. And Mickens getting the outside, a couple of nice blocks. He was able to cut back, and then he, he beat Anikbo. Well, and the Butler fans loving this. This is the most offense they've seen. Look at Mickens just powering into the end zone. He says, get off me there at the end. And he says, I'm walking in. Look at that. You're what a run. Looking to complete the 28th point. It is up. And it is bueno.
Order Memorial Hospital offers the services of experienced healthcare professionals and the most advanced medical technologies. With a comprehensive system of healthcare services and facilities, Porter Memorial Hospital is truly a leader in Northwest Indiana and a leader in healthcare. Come on, you're gonna make us late. Hey man, what is this with you? What's your problem? There's never a train here. Just go for it. No one's gonna see you. The light's probably broken. Yeah, let's go. Come on, Mike. Come on, chicken. Yeah! I wish I hadn't listened to him. Office has obviously been doing a great job today. They, they have really been putting the points on board. 28 points already. That's more points than they've scored all year. And we still got better than a quarter and a half to play. But the defense now has to step it up and make the stop because they just can't let Valparaiso come back with another score. Ozzie Young brought down at the 32-yard line. They've done a pretty good job of stopping him. Young making some nice runs there in the first half, getting out to the 45-yard line. And so we take a look at Mickens after that 27-yard touchdown. At this time last year, boy, you can see the difference, 1,132 in 1994, 828, still a very respectable number, but not comparatively to last year, uh, things not quite as successful, but Mickens making some big plays today, two touchdowns, is really uh, trying to redeem himself here at homecoming. There he goes, lofting it up in the air again. Deep. And out of bounds. Brought down out of bounds. That pass to number 86, Michael Tolbert. Well, Brian, I'm going to be interested to see if Butler drops back in the zone on this or if they're going to stick with the man-to-man -to -man in the secondary because they're not staying with their, with their uh, wide receivers there for, for the Crusaders, and they're burning them every play. And still, there was two guys on the receiver there, and he still got the catch. They were just lucky he was out of bounds. So if I was Valparaiso, I'd keep going back with the pass until Butler finds some way to stop it. The game is to Ozzie Young. He looks towards the outside, and he is brought down by number 25, Adam Burrell. Burrell with a nice tackle there. Young manages to make his way out to the 35-yard line, a gain of about three yards. Although we haven't heard Burrell's name very much today, mentioned uh, as far as getting stops and things like that, I know by the end of the game he's going to be in double figures with tackles. He's... He's a silent achiever. He comes up with the big plays, and you may not hear his name mentioned that much, but he's always there. Third down and seven, less than six to play in the third quarter. 35-28, the Butler D looks to make a stop here. Browder looking to pass, Get and he's put down in the backfield. That stop by number, number 76, Mark Prevost. I'm sorry, that was number 78. Pardon yes, me, sir. I, I didn't read that quite right. Travis Campbell. Campbell having a lot of fun out there today. He's made some nice plays. He's been in the quarterback's face time after time, and if you remember, he had that penalty early in the game uh, saying that he hit the quarterback late, so he finally got it. He's been working for it all day. Sweet Lou back to receive. The snap is away, the kick is up. And it's a relatively long one. Andreatis gets it at about the 33. He works his way up to the 45 and is brought down there. So Butler with some good field position to start things off. And now they have an opportunity to tie, Dave. This is, this is beautiful. This is as close as they've been. Seven points away from uh, evening up the game here with Valparaiso. If they can do it on this drive, man, it's going to be interesting going down the stretch. The Butler offense making the big plays, possession after possession. The defense did an excellent job there, Brian. They stopped him, and that's what they've been needing to do and haven't been able to, but they finally put a nice defensive series together. Play action. Nice job of avoiding the tackler there. Jacobs, he gets the pass off for a first down to Jim Pico at the Valparaiso. 44-yard line. <laughs> Jacobs is amazing me today. He's shaking he's, off tacklers like Mickens. Yes, he is. I have not seen him play like that. He's coming out. This is a whole new man. It's kind of like uh, 
Look at this. Look at this. What a shot. Breaking away from the potential sack and airing it out to Jimmy Pico. And a nice catch there by Pico as well. Two backs. The give is to Mickens. He looks towards the outside. He's got a little room. He gets out to about the 36-yard line on about that seven play. seven yards there. Nice pickup. And Mickens really starting to come into his own. We saw him stunned quite a bit there in the first part of the first half, trying to take it up to the middle. Offensive coordinator Phil Dorn made some adjustments, and they've been the correct ones because this Butler offense has really charged up the field with a great deal of authority this afternoon. 4-10 left to play. Butler looking to tie it up on this drive. Second down and two yards to go. The give once again to Mickens. He looks to go to the outside. Makes up a little ground. He might be out far enough for the first down. He barely got out past the 35-yard line. We'll see where they give the spot. They may need a measurement on this one. And I believe they are going to call for the sticks. Well, this, this defense of, of Valparaiso, you have to give them a lot of credit because for the most part, they've really been stuffing the run of Butler. And uh, they have a lot of experience on the, on both sides of the ball, though, Brian. And and as we mentioned, they, they're in a lot of ways equal to Butler in many respects. But uh, they have a lot of size and a lot of... And a lot of uh, experience on both and sides of the ball. Look at that. First down. A, a nice measurement for the Bulldogs. Gives them the first down at the Valparaiso 36-yard line. And speaking of experience and inexperience, Butler can get this victory today. That's A victory matures people so much because then they get the feeling that they can win. They can do it. And they need that right now to lead them in to a, maybe a, a winning winning feel here for this Bulldog team. Butler has been in a two touchdown deficit for most of the game and now they're looking to tie things up. Jacobs pressured and a nice job dishing it off to Arnold Mickens who makes his way back up to the line of scrimmage. Toby Jacobs pressured by three defenders there but what presence of mind to get that ball off and really didn't lose Man. a whole lot of ground whereas they could have That's probably right. lost about 10 or 15 Actually, yards. Actually they picked up about a foot but Mickens put a helmet on the defender there. Boy, I didn't catch the number. But, man, that crack was unbelievable up here. The whole team, the Bulldogs like it. Now watch this. Let's take look a at Jacobs. I don't know how he's avoiding getting sacks so many times. Look, look at that. Wow. Well, Mickens so often putting his head down, he goes to the outside. Look at the stiff now. arm by Mickens. Tries to drag him down. It's not going to happen. He gets out to the 29-yard tw line. And Josh Bimming. Number six for Valparaiso got his head put right in the dirt. Mickens uses that stiff arm so effectively. And you see it game after game. That's how he gets around those corners. He gets that arm out, sticks him, and he takes the guy by the helmet and puts his head right in the ground. So rare. I, I love to see it. That's, a, that's, that's how, that's the Heisman move right there. You know, that's the Heisman move. You, if you look at the trophy, that's the way we got it. They got that stiff arm out there. <laughs> so rare that... Arnold Mickens is ever brought down by the first defender to get a hand on him simply because of his speed and power and that stiff arm as Toby Jacobs has nowhere to go. Not able to get out of it that time. And Jacobs has done a, a fairly good job of avoiding defenders so far this afternoon and, and making some good plays out of potentially bad ones. But the, the, def the offensive line has got to give him a little bit more time to set up. Well, even that, that was a freshman who made that sack. Number 94, John Wrench, 6'5", uh, 231, uh, defensive end there. The offensive line didn't even act like they tried to block anybody they completely. There was no pocket for Jacobs to go to. There was nowhere for him to run, and it just completely collapsed right around him. They, they've got to put out more effort, the offensive line does, for Butler. Well, faced with a fourth down and seven now, They'll leave Sean Wood on the sideline again. Boy, Ken LaRose has really put it on the line more than once today in a fourth down situation. Look at this. It's out to uh -oh. Andrianis, but a beautiful tackle by Aniko. And Andrianis had absolutely no chance of getting anything out of that. That he was, was a right huge there. Hit. He was right there to, to smother him. And Icky Enigbo, 
Butler a missed opportunity at tying the game, but the defense has stopped him twice. They'll look to stop him a third time and give him their counterparts. He's going to be hurting tonight. I'm sorry. He's he's been hit hard several times. Look at this hit. Here he goes. Jacobs passes out. Immediately met. Oh man, that was a shot. Of course, it'll, you don't play the game and don't expect to get hit like that every once in a while. It'll be Valparaiso with the ball in zone 26. Nice. Right now. Ah, there it is one more time. They got sucked in on the option. Holsklaw was not there. He eventually drug him down, but after he already picked up 12 yards, got to hit him at the line every time. Pardon me, that was Young that went to the outside there. Boy, what a... So many offensive threats on this team. Cracknell at, at the fullback position has broken it open a couple of times. You've got Heinrichs on the wing and, and Ozzie Young pretty much everywhere on the field. Here is Cracknell with the run up the middle. And that was a nice stick. Stopped at the, line of the scrimmage, at the line of scrimmage. Gang tackle there. Burrell was there along with most of the defensive line. Second and nine now. We're nearing the two minute mark here in the third quarter of play and Butler has got to be looking for another stop here. They need a Need a big defensive stand. Look, need a big rolling time. out to the right. Router looking to pass. And that pass is complete to number 81, Daryl Jackson, the tight end. Incomplete. Incomplete. That was beautiful defense there by the Bulldogs. It looked complete from up, from up here, but uh, great defensive job. Nice pass break up there. I Darryl. believe that was uh, Joe Miles on that coverage, Repla Dar the guy who replaced Ely. Daryl Jackson, currently not having control of that ball as he went out of bounds. So the rule is incomplete. And third down and nine now. Butler, Shotgun. another chance for a stop. Router pursued. Yes, look at this. And he is going oh, down big for a big loss. Oh, yes. What a defensive play there. Heath Number Bond. 44, Heath Vaughn gets a hold of Router. Check out this. At his own 22-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Big defensive play there. There were three guys there to hit him. There was a complete mix-up on coverage by the offensive line. Look at this. Three men there to meet him. Bam, what a shot. Heath Bunn taking him down hard. It'll be Andreatis back to receive. End over end there, right to him. He makes there it goes Lou Andreatis. The 50. And the ball is stripped out of bounds. Boy, a close play there. You don't like to see that. Buddy manages to get, make his way to Valparaiso territory. And once again, the Butler Bulldog offense will look to tie this one up at 35 apiece. One minute and one tick left here in the third quarter. Coach Dorn having a pretty, uh, <laughs> it looked like a, Pretty loud conversation, I guess you could say, with his offensive unit there while the defense was out on the field. And we'll see if he got a little fired up and put something together here. Parker and Mickens, the backfield. It'll be Jacobs to roll out. There it out. goes, the roll out one more time. It. He's out to the 45, to the 40, and stretches his way out to a first down you don't at the 37-yard line. You don't see Jacobs sliding, man. He's, he's a quarterback. He's going to cut it up and take it. He broke it inside there. That was a great run. 12 yards on that pickup. Man, here, look at this. Jacobs, a fake. This play worked. This is the third time they've run, and this worked every time. Cutting it up, breaking a tackle, pulling it in there, getting the first down on the first play of that drive. Toby Jacobs doing it all today. Once again, Parker and Mickens, the backs. The give is to Mickens. He finds a gap. He's making his way outside, breaks a tackle. That was a late hit. Yes, sir. They're going to give it to him as well. There. This is going to be an extra 15 tacked on. So Mickens really was making his way out close to a first down on that play. That penalty will help him along. And Butler. Butler Look at this. We have a true Butler 
bolt dog. Look at that. He's got the pants and all that. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. That is a mean pair of sweatpants right there, let me tell you. Look at this. Oh, I love it. We've seen some great things today. Streakers, <laughs> dogs with clothes on, you can catch it all here on Butler Football 95. And, and look it, at this field position Butler will have now after that huge penalty. Here's the replay. Oh boy, he got hit. Well, you hate to see anything like that happen. Doesn't matter who it is because the wall here at the Butler Bowl is so close to the sideline. Those late hits can be very dangerous and uh, Mickens got pushed into the wall very hard there. I'm glad he came away all right. But we've seen many people over the years get hurt. I've been nailed into it a time or two myself and hit the let me let me just say that that cement wall doesn't give. Many have questioned which is stronger, the wall or Arnold Mickens, and he has certainly played with a great deal of strength today as he bullies his way out to the 10-yard line. Well, it's encouraging to see his offensive lineman out in front of him here, they, and they're really starting to give Mickens a little bit of room to run, and uh, we've got to have that play after play. He picks up six on that play. You know, plays like that give the offensive line a lot of pride, too, because they say, man, look what we did. We gave, we gave him some room to run. And offensive linemen will come back, and and after, of course, after this quarter's over with, they're going to be talking to each other, and say, hey, we're moving the ball on these guys. Let's keep it going. Well, Butler will make the march down to the other end of the field. They'll have it on the 10-yard line and a chance to tie things up. At the Valparaiso Physician and Surgery Center, we're dedicated to delivering high-quality health care services. Located in Chandana Point, the surgery center is a high-tech and high-touch outpatient facility with an expertly trained staff. You're welcomed by the lobby's home-like setting where family members can wait. Also available, walk-in urgent care, physician offices, and occupational medicine. We do x-rays, electrocardiograms, low-dose mammography, medical laboratory, and other diagnostic tests. The Valparaiso Physician and Surgery Center and the Family Practice Network of Physicians are affiliated with St. Anthony Medical Center, Crown Point. If you're enjoying this game and you're a business person, you can become part of the action. Just call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions for all the details on becoming a sponsor of upcoming telecasts. Your ad will be seen and heard by the large and growing audience of these local sports telecasts. Just call 477-5803 for all the information. That's 477-5803. And if you'd like a copy of tonight's telecast, Advertising, Marketing, and Promotion, have them available for a small fee. Call 477-5803. Back at the Butler Bowl, fourth quarter action, the Bulldogs coming back from a 14-point deficit, looking to tie things up here as they have the ball on the 10-yard line. I think maybe that little Bulldog mascot dog there on the sidelines is giving us a lot of luck today. We need to bring him back. Oh, he's got the outfit going. Look and at this run. going opposite direction. He's got room. He could get into the oh, yes. touchdown. Oh, Arnold Mickens, my. his third of the day. That was and the, the run of the year. tie this game up. Over the wall he goes. Oh, my, what a play. Arnold Mickens just decided he didn't want to go that direction, turned around and ran it into the end zone. Well, what did Ten it yards out. Did you see that blocking? Oh, my goodness. We We'll see a replay of that in a minute, but oh man, there's some big time, big time blocks on that. Mickens had plenty of room to get it in the end zone and he used every inch. And Arnold Mickens picks up his third score, making up for lost time this season. And now Yurik will come in to tie the game up. The kick is up. And the kick is good. We are tied at 35-35 with 14.50 left to play in this homecoming game. The Butler defense coming up with a big stop on a sack by Heath Bond. And the Butler offense coming up big once again. The latest state-of-the-art computers. Technicians trained to handle the newest advancements in automotive technology. Complete car service from brakes and shocks to fuel injection and emission repairs. A service staff with over 100 years of combined experience. And all at low competitive prices. At Co-op Car Care, they can tune your engine, computer balance and rotate your tires, full tire and wheel alignment, replace your brakes and much, much more. Whatever your car care needs, your answer is Co-op Car Care on Roosevelt Road, Valparaiso. Take One Video is not just another video store featuring over 10,000 titles. Tuesday is Senior Citizens Day. 
Wednesday is Ladies' Day, and Thursday, two for one Thursday. Plus, with a Take One Video Punch Card, you'll get a free movie every time you rent 10. Call 462-0098 to get guaranteed reservation on your favorite movies. VCR repair available. Take One Video, 6 Morgan Boulevard, Valparaiso. Just in, Pulp Fiction, Major Payne, Losing Isaiah, Kiss of Death, and Billy Madison. This team really showing some poise. They went down very early in the game, but the offense has really kept them going, and the defense has stepped up here in the second half. Here is Ozzie Young, and he is grounded again. Ball, ball. ball. Who's it? I think it may be Butler's ball. It sure and is. Butler recovers. The special teams coming up this. with a big play. And hold on a second. I think we, we, we need to have the official ruling on it. Number 27 comes up with it, Kevin Russell. But are they going to rule it down? We don't know. Here's the replay. Let's take a look at the replay. Here is Ozzie Young. He gets it. Moves out to the outside. And I think that they oh, ruled it. Oh, he wasn't it. down. Oh, my goodness, he wasn't down. I think maybe they ruled it. Valparaiso ball. What do we got here? A re-kick. A re-kick. Well, oh, is, my. There was a penalty right on the offset of that kick, you see. Certainly and, some uh, strange circumstances here. It sure was. It looked as if for a moment that Butler had it back. We thought that it, they had it back. And, and, and every, uh, every indication down on the field looked that way. But there was a penalty right here at right here at the outset. Nobody said anything, but we heard the whistle started, starting to blow. And uh, we're going to have to uh, re-kick this one. It was an offside penalty that uh, set the Bulldogs back. What happened was uh, one of the guys going down to get downfield on coverage crossed the line of scrimmage before he kicked the ball. And uh, that, of course, is an offsides. And Valparaiso definitely elects to have a re-kick on that. They didn't want to give the ball up to Butler. There's Ozzie Young again. Out to the 30, the 35. Plows his way out to the 40-yard line before he stopped. And that's where Valparaiso will pick it up. 14-37 left to play in the game. 35-35, we are tied here at the Butler Bowl. One of the coaches quote, our, our mistakes really took us out of the great game. Thought we played hard, but we have to find a way to eliminate the mistakes that are killing us. And Dave, I think we've seen them eliminate some of those mistakes this afternoon. Definitely. First half, of course, they had some big mental penalties. Um, this second half, though, they're playing very good ball, really sucking it up on defense. It's Browder. There's the draw. Getting off the young, and he's got some room. Stumbles his way out to about the 48-yard line, a pickup of about eight yards. And Nick Dave, Lennings. When you look at that run, it looks like he's getting a lot more yards than he really is, simply because Browder drops so back and so far back in the pocket yes. to hand it off. Well, they're really using that draw to their advantage, and, it, and it's worked very effectively for them. In fact, it's turned into a, a, at least one touchdown for the Crusaders. And so Butler needs to hold their ground on those draw plays because they're really getting sucked in. But not, not too bad, though. They let up about seven. Cracknell. Cracknell is... Tough man to bring down. Attacked by a gang of tacklers at the line of scrimmage, and he's not going anywhere. That's going to bring us up to a third down and three. Cracknell got drilled by Griswold initially. Cracknell walking back to that huddle, he was out of breath. Put a nice helmet right in the chest and knocked the wind right out of him. Well, Cracknell did manage to pick up one yard and missed a tough defensive line. And it'll be third down and two now. Butler's been able to come up with the big stops on third down when they needed it. Here's another chance, Browder. A nice push up the middle there, and it's going to be close. Gonna be enough, though. It's going to be close. They had to get out to the 50-yard line. And they may be just short of that. We'll wait and see where the spot is. The question is, will they go for it? Oh, there's that dog again. I'll tell you. Boy, is he excited. We need to get him out there on the line. Well, they did. He lost his pants, though, I did notice. Well, maybe maybe he's our next streaker. <laughs> he may be. Who knows? 
And now to Cracknell, he found a seam and he exploited it. Out to another first down. Well, I say, I say they gave him a generous spot on that last play. What do you say, bro? To give him that first down. Gave him a first down and they waste no time in getting another one. They are now out to the 38-yard line of Butler. This is where Butler has to step it up and say no more yardage. They can't give him another first down because that gets him at least within field goal position. Crack now, and Young in the backfield. They give us the Young. He goes to the outside and gets out to about gets the 31 yard the line. And luckily caught by the net and then running into the, the wall. So the beating not coming from the defenders. A crucial stop here for Butler. Down on the sideline right now, we have our own Drew Johnson. Drew, what do you know? Brian, not very much, but I do know this. Coach Jordan just pulled the offensive unit together. I've never seen him this close. He was screaming at him. He said, guys, don't worry about what happens on the defensive side of the ball. You go out there, you execute. Every time we get the ball, we've got to score. That's the mentality on the offensive side of things down here on the sidelines. Back to you, Brian. Second down and five to go. Twelve and a half to play in the game. Beautiful job by knocking down Cracknell there. Ryan Vermillion, the senior defensive tackle, flowed right with him, and uh, Cracknell got tripped up by his own man, and Vermillion was right there to fall on top of him, stop him for no gain. Third down and five. Crucial play here for Valparaiso. Possibly even more crucial for the Butler Bulldogs. They have battled their way back in this game to tie things up at 35. Now looking for the opportunity to possibly take the lead. Cracknell is brought down right away. No gain on that play. That's what Butler and, has to have. And now we'll see what Valparaiso does with a tied up. Still have a lot of time left on the clock, you Dave. Bet. Does he go for it? They're going to go for it. I, I, they have nothing to lose here. Um, tied up. They're on the other side of the 50, so they're not going to gain a huge amount if they punt. They're going to talk it over here and see, see what they think. Well, they may punt. Valparaiso did not have... They've only got five seconds left on the time clock. They're going to have to hurry. Valparaiso did not attempt to force down is. conversion. And boy, there's a... Boy, the loss of a timeout in such a close game, Dave. We'll look at that down the stretch there. Uh, indecision there upon, on the part of the Valpo sideline. It could cost them down the stretch here at the end of the game. So Butler making the big stop, and Valpo hasn't risked, risked a whole lot, really hasn't had to. No, they haven't. They did not have a fourth down conversion in the first half. However, in the first half on the third down conversion, converting on four of five. That has not been the case here in the second half, Dave. Butler's done a pretty nice job of stopping them on third down when they needed to. They sure have, and that's the key here. From here on out, it's just defensive stops. If they can get any type of points on the board from here on out, Butler, you know, definitely be in the advantage. And the defense is doing a nice job. I'm, I'm just so impressed with how fired up and how intense they're playing out there. But you know something we haven't seen on this drive, Brian, is the pass. And I kind of wonder why, but uh, you may see it right here. Who knows? They, they could fake it. The big blue defensive machine looking to make the big stop here as we go once again to another PFL score right now. 23-6, Drake still a commanding lead over the Evansville Aces. We've got a real good one on our hands here at the Butler Ball. The punt is up and it is good and that one's going to sail Ooh. into the end zone. So Butler will get it on their own 20 yard line. Another chance to take the lead here as the defense comes up with a, another big stop. And Dave, you almost would have to say that that might be the biggest stop they've had here in the second Definitely. half. Definitely. And that, and that when Valpo's been down in this position, they've usually scored. That, ha that wasn't the case here on this drive. Well, they did what they had to. They had to stop any type of break in momentum, and they did that. Butler now has the ball. Now it's down to uh, controlling the clock. 
Butler needs to ground it out and try to wind off as much of that clock as they can and get some points on the board. They'll give it to Mickens. He found a nice hole. He's there flicking he goes, it open. Baby. He's still oh, yeah. 40. The 50 has got one man to beat. He won't beat him. But they bring him down oh, at my. the 35-yard line of Valparaiso. Arnold Mickens. Dave from here. Oh, man. Hey. We may see another 295-yard game out of Mickens yet. From your mouth to oh, God's ear, my. Arnold Mickens breaks a big one open, gets to the 35, very close to breaking it open for a touchdown, but a big play for the Butler offense. And that's where Butler has a decisive advantage. They can keep that run going. They can use up quite a bit of clock. 47-yard run. Look at this. There's breaking one tackle, breaking another tackle, and going down the field. Oh, and so I, close to breaking away for the touchdown. Andre Murphy there doing a nice job of wrapping his arm around the neck of Mickens in order to drag him down. Andre's the one down on the field now. Andre Murphy, number four, who made that stop. I think he's just more or less out of breath. Man, he, he did a heck of a job coming all the way from the other side of the field to catch up with Arnold Mickens. He had a good angle to cut him off there. Man, what a run. Holy cow. That is exciting. That, that's the longest run for Mickens since that 70-yard touchdown run against Howard Payne in the fourth quarter of that game. All, all you need to do is give Mickens a little hole and he can, he can run a mile. Butler leads the series over Valpo 38-15. Of course, we mentioned in the outset they had beat them 13 straight times up until last year when they lost to Valpo. Valpo is... Uh, Led by that strong halfback, Ozzie Young, but it's been an offensive battle all afternoon. The Butler offense coming up with as many big plays as Valpo gets it off to Parker there, and he's not going to get much farther than the line of scrimmage on that play. Well, you don't see anything going to the fullback very much in the Butler offense, but uh, Parker just doing enough, doing a job just to get the ball away from Jacobs and avoiding the sack. Arnold Mickens. Coming up with so many big plays this afternoon. Three touchdowns. One from 27 yards out. The other just a, the beginning of the fourth quarter when he changed directions. Here goes Naeem Sanders. Naeem Sanders getting the carry here, and he gets out. And is dragged That's out well of flagged, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Naeem Sanders dragged out of bounds at about... Drag that about to about the 28-yard line, and he was hit late. And boy, there's a sea of blue gathering around down there. And I don't think you want to start a fight in the lion's den or the dog's house, so to speak. Here's let's a take a look at the replay. And look at Naeem. He's got some wheels coming around the corner there. But look, he just threw him into the wall, and there was no need for that. He was already three yards out of bounds, and he throws him into the wall. It's no secret that these two teams are rivals. A bitterness has formed over the years of Valpo, I think, and Butler's extreme advantage over the Crusaders. Look at this field position this is going to give Butler now. Big opportunity for Valparaiso, and you know, Dave, we're seeing Valpo with some big penalties here. That's right. In the and second half, and, you know, it's, it's cost them very similar in the, in the way that it cost Butler in the first half. Exactly. And, and they're not small penalties either. This, this penalty gives Butler half the distance to the goal line in great position to put another score on the board. You really hate to see uh, these types of penalties, though. Uh, these, uh, it, it's you know, starting to get uh, frustration type of a, type penalties now. Personal fouls is something you really don't like to see a whole lot in the game as Mickens exploits a gap up the middle and gets out to about the five-yard line. There you see Sir Arnold removing himself from the pile. Oh, and the Bulldog. He's down He's down there close to the end zone. He's, oh. he's smelling a touchdown, Dave. Now Butler has to hold on to the ball. Hold on to the ball. Second down. Three to go on the five-yard line. Official timeout here. There's some uh, confusion. We had quite a few of officials timeout this afternoon, and well, they just want to make sure things are right. I guess the officials almost as confused as we are at, at moments, Dave. <laughs> this is true.
second down and three. The give is to Mickens. He plows his way up the middle and maybe a first down he's here. He's very close to the two yard line. We'll have to see where the spot is. He could be out to another first down. Third down, we're calling it. Coming up just short. You would almost think that Butler might look to put this one in the end zone. And throw Valparaiso off guard instead of going for the first down. First down and one. Here come the Bulldogs. John Knight, Usani Dillon wide. The lone setback is Arnold Mickens. Third down and one on the three. The give is to Mickens. He's got a little room. Stiff's arm Touchdown. into the end zone. Number Arnold four Mickens. for Arnold Mickens. And Butler leads oh now 41 to 35. Oh my, you talk about turning the heat on today. Mickens is having the game of the year so far for the Bulldogs. Unbelievable. Once again, the stiff arm driving himself into the end zone. Arnold Mickens, man, what a run that was. The Butler fans on their feet. Arnold Mickens. There's a lot of time on the clock left, though, Brian. 840 left. Butler now with the lead 41 to 35. They're going to have to make another big defensive stop. Eric looking to seal the deal with the extra point. The kick is up. And once again, it is Bueno. 42-35. Butler leads for the first time in this game and for the first time in several weeks. The offense finally bringing it together. Arnold Mickens running it to the outside. That first run, Look a large run. one, and, and this one on his fourth touchdown. Let's Watch have a look at Watch the stiff arm here, Brian. Watch the stiff arm. There's the give to Mickens. Oh, and yes. that's pushing him out of the way. That made all the difference as he made his way into the end zone. That's so, what, that's what strength will do for you. This Butler team, entirely different from the one we have seen in the past two weeks playing very well and now they lead 42 to 35 and what has been an offensive battle but here in the second half the defense able to make crucial stops putting the offense into position they're to take get, the lead they're going to get another chance to do it again and they've got to put a huge defensive series together on this on this time down the field uh, they've run the gamut today they've they had sure to make have. the comeback they've had to take the lead and now they've got to maintain that lead ozzy young the receive at the 15. he's up to the 20 and nice. down at the 25 play. yard line i believe that was number 26 craig i want to say Hauser. craig hauser defensive captain craig hauser the big senior i'll tell you what i'm, I'm going to say it again the seniors have really been leading this game uh, you've seen burrell making some big plays Lou Andriatis, huge plays. Jacobs, Mickens, and and there you saw you saw uh, Craig Hauser. The, the seniors are definitely leading this game. And there is John Knight being worked on in the sideline. It's like he's got some cramps down there. That's typical for this part of a game. When you get towards the latter stages and really expended a lot of energy, those cramps start coming on. And it's a relatively cool day here in Indianapolis too. As Browner Quarterback decides draw. to keep it, he's got some room and he. Makes his way out to his own 40-yard line, and that's more than enough for a first down. Well, Butler did a nice job covering everything else, but they forgot the quarterback, and they let him slide right up through the middle there. Nice run. You know, in the second half, they've been doing a pretty good job of, of controlling the rush a little bit. They haven't let Browder get out in that option play and really exploit it too much. Right there, Browder able to pick up a substantial game there and now it's first and ten at the there's a the draw one more time nowhere they catch young before he can make much of a gain at all he might be lucky to get out to the line of scrimmage butler's seen that one too many times today ryan vermilion holding his ground he was right there to meet him and ryan vermilion is really he's having the game, game of his life today yeah this is the best game we've, we've seen out of him in his career I see his parents down there in the stands and they're excited too. Former Marion Giant from near my hometown of Fairmount, uh, Ryan Vermillion, uh, definitely a brother of his, or brother of the legend, Aaron Vermillion, a star linebacker for the Bulldogs for four years. Louder to pass. He's looking deep to Heinrichs and a nice catch a and an even better hit there by number 20, Miles. 
Lord, he put his helmet right in his chest, but Heinrich, amazingly, able to hold on to that ball. And Boy, Dave, he's made some real spectacular catches today. Yeah, and Heinrich's so big, that didn't really hurt him that bad. He popped right up and said, hey, looky what I got. <laughs> he came down with that catch. What what hands he's got. 6'4", this guy is, is a really an unbelievable receiver with speed and size that you just don't see at this level very often. On the Butler 38 now, first and 10. You give it off. Crack now. To crack now, and he smothered fairly quickly. He gave him about a yard on that play. Butler's got to stuff him here because this is about the same area of the field where they stuffed him last time, and they need some big defensive plays, not letting Valparaiso get within field goal range. Problem you often look at after you finally make your way up into the lead. Such a long climb there for Butler, really having to work hard. Easy, out of a hole. easy to become complacent and mentally let up a little bit, something they can ill afford to do here. Look for the pass, Browder. Second and eight. Back to pass is Browder. He's got plenty of time, gets it to Young on a screen, and Young makes his way out to the 35-yard line. Maybe picked up a yard on that. That looks like it. Uh, they really strung that play out, and the defenders came up and played that really well. That's right, he only picked up a yard on that play. It looked like he picked up a lot more, and he really had he had room to run if they didn't stop him right there. So, great job by the Butler defense. Third down now, they got to hold him one more time, Brian. Valparaiso's offense played so deep back in the pocket. Really have to work hard to get upfield for big gains, and Butler's been doing a nice job of meeting them at the line of scrimmage. Here it is. There's Brown a draw. It off. Oh, yeah. And he's oh, yeah. wow. They give it off to number five, Maurice Watkins. He wasn't going anywhere, and the Butler defense making another loss. big making another big stop. And we'll see what that just Valparaiso decides to do here. That just amazes me that, that Valparaiso keeps going to that draw, play after play after play. And Butler has controlled that draw this second half. You saw just a little bit ago where, of course, the, the quarterback had a pretty good run on a quarterback draw, but I don't think that was meant, meant to be. Fourth so. down and ten now. Desperate times call for desperate measures. He rolls out. He looks deep. And it is incomplete. And it's going to be pass interference. Intended for number 86, Tolbert. Pass interference. And, and I saw it twice out there. So that's going to give an automatic first down to the Crusaders. That is not what Butler needed. A big play, or a big penalty, rather. In fact, Valparaiso. that was Craig Hauser. And what he did was he held up the receiver. He held on to him. Yep, they just called, called a holding there, a defensive holding. You can't hold up that receiver. You can hit him once within that five-yard stretch, but you can't hold him up. And, and he was getting burnt, so he grabs on. That's the first natural thing to do, and you can't do it. That was a good call by the referee. A lot of times that gets missed. So now from fourth down to first down, a big break for the Valparaiso Crusaders. Five and a half left to play in the game. Butler leads 42-35. Valparaiso has it on Butler's 28-yard line, threatening the score once again. Valparaiso giving Butler quite a few yards on penalties, and Butler returning the favor there with a costly mistake. These mistakes come back to haunt you, Brian. Sprouter looks for the pass. Getting he pressured. He's uh -oh. looking deep, and that's going to be well out of the reach of Heinrichs. Heinrichs, Heinrich, Heinrichs was pretty well open there. He had broken away from Brian Healy, number four. Let me and tell boy, you, you want to talk about a size Oh, advantage. exactly. That's what I was getting ready to, ready to say. Brian Healy, only 5'7". He's a freshman from Brownsburg. <laughs> he was beat by about 10 or 15 yards. Uh, Coach Rose promptly pulls him off the field and replaces him there. But we're talking seven inches you're giving up there, plus a heck of a lot of reach. And he had a long stretch in front of him there where between he and uh, Heinrichs. Second down and 10. Browder looking deep again. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown. To number 86 once again, Michael Tolbert. He was wide open in the end zone. And Browder landed that one on a dime. Big touchdown. 
Kevin Russell burnt badly on that play. He was a good three to four yards behind him. Big touchdown for the Crusaders there. Well, you knew it was going to happen because the run was not going anywhere for Valparaiso. And that big pass to Heinrichs at the opening of this series really set things off for Valparaiso. They passed it all the way down the field from then on out. Let's that penalty on. killed him. The extra point is no good. It's blocked. Coming out of nowhere was number 20, Joe Miles. Oh and he shoved that one back down into the ground. What a big play by the Butler defense. And now Valparaiso trails by one with 5.22 left to play. Dave. This is almost scary, kind of Dayton-like. You know? Oh, boy. It really is. Oh, my goodness. What a defensive play. That I was really worried there because it still can come back to haunt him. That penalty gave Valparaiso that first down, allows him to score. But man, what a play by Joe Miles. And the Butler fans for a moment in despair because of the touchdown, but a big play there by Joe Miles. Wow. What a block. That was exciting. That, that it still can come back to haunt him. That penalty gave Valparaiso that first down, allows him to score, but man, what a play by Joe Miles. And the Butler fans for a moment in despair because of the touchdown, but a big play there by Joe Miles. Wow. What a block. That was exciting. That, that was great to see. Miles has really stepped up in today's oh, game. It really stepped it up, it, replacing Ely, who's had an excellent season. Ely, of course, sidelined with that injury early on in the game. And Miles stepping up into his spot and playing very well so far. And there you see Naeem Sanders on your screen as they await the Valparaiso kickoff. 42 41, less than five and a half to play here in the 1995 homecoming game. Brian Lawson and Dave Amick along with you. And what has been a great day for Butler football, making a comeback, here is Andreatis. He's up to the 30, almost broke it loose for a moment. Gets out to the 35, really wiggled his way through a clump of defenders and a nice run back there. Out to the 30, his own 35-yard line, and that's where Toby Jacobs and his gang will pick things up. Good field position to start off with. Louis Andreatis having that speed just about broke it through the middle. Man, that was very close. Uh, Lou Andreatis, an exciting player. If you like offense, this has been the game to watch. There goes Mickens one more Mickens time, baby. Open, gets out to the 50-yard line, and Mickens, give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And He took a first down on that play, and we've got a Valparaiso defender down. And boy, I think he... he I think, oh my goodness, he's hurt bad. Shoulder, it looks like. Yeah, he uh, he looks to be in a in a great deal of pain down there. On Lou the... Andriatis was back there. Lou Andriatis was very worried about him. He was, he called the Valparaiso trainers onto the field to see what was the matter. Obviously, this man hurting very much. I, I didn't see the number on who that was. Did you, Brian? I believe. That might have been John Wrench. I believe it's, it's number 60, Jeremiah Hirsch, but... Matt Culp, Matt, number 60, okay. Matt Culp, and that, that could serve to be a, somewhat of a loss for Valparaiso. He has played very Culp. well this game. Look at the replay and see what happens here. Culp playing very well against San Diego Culp last week. playing that defensive 12, tackle spot. 12 tackles last week against San Diego. And really couldn't see uh, right there what exactly happened to him, but a nice run by Arnold Mickens, as, as I was mentioning there. Six solo tackles last week, two sacks, 12 total tackles against San Diego. So Culp is somebody you don't want to see go out. And hard to say what's, what's a, wrong with him. He's a tough competitor. Excellent player. You hate to see anybody get injuries. You know, this, but football's fun. And uh, when you get, when you get sidelined and you, you take the game so seriously, it's, it's devastating. And he being, he being a, uh, junior, you know, he still has one year, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman, you have to set out. It, it's, it's tough.
Well, right now, we're going to take it down to the sideline for a moment with our own Drew Johnson. Drew? Okay, Brian, thanks a lot. I've been snooping around in the huddles once again. And part of the reason Valpo gives up so many points is they do a lot of blitzing with the strong safety and linebackers. Butler's been able to capitalize by Mickens running outside, and Knight's gotten deep in pass coverage. Let's see what happens on this drive. And we'll await this snap on a first down at 10 at midfield. Coach Dorn doing a nice job countering that blitz. Here's the give to Mickens, and he's got nowhere to go as he is down right near the line of scrimmage. If Butler can run to that ground game one more time, take that clock second by second off of there and take their time between each play and using their 25 seconds they have, that's going to be to their benefit. They do not need to be in a hurry here. Take their time, set up the play, take their time in the huddle, and they're doing that. Jacobs takes the snap. They'll roll back, looking for the pass. And Bobble. Ross Athen had a rough time this year. I'll tell you, he, he had a great catch last week against Drake and then got drilled and fumbled the ball 10 yards away from the end zone, which ended up being a, a scoring drive for Drake and and he's had a few few nice catches that he's been hit hard and, and dropped and there he just had one go off his knees it's tough though when you only get the ball passed to you about one time a game it's hard to be in the right mindset you're used to coming off the ball and blocking play after play and then you have to go out and do a little finesse third down and ten shotgun formation the give us the Mickens he finds some room but is brought down relatively quick only a gain of about four on that play, and that'll bring out the punting squad for Butler. So not a lengthy drive for the Bulldogs. Look at this. Giving Mickens. Valparaiso plenty of plenty of time still. Lincoln doesn't leave the field. He he stays on there for the punts and he gets down there and makes most of the tackles too. Almost nice blocked. Punt. Gets it to Young. And Young is brought down at about the 24. So they've been doing a pretty good job in terms of kick coverage on, on Ozzie Young. And Dave Arnold Mickens staying out there on the field. And we could hear a, a bit of displeasure below us here. For, right below us is the coaching staff of the Bulldogs. And you certainly don't want to leave him out there on the field and give an opportunity for him to get to get. Yeah, that's right, Brian. Uh, you don't... You don't want to see Mickens get hurt on something like a punt, but he doesn't want to come off the field. He wants to get down there and stick somebody. And, uh, you know, that just shows how much of a competitor he is. In fact, he asked Coach LaRose if he could play linebacker as well this year. LaRose quickly denied that, that question. Router back to pass. And he finds a wide open, number 86. And he gets all the way out to the 45-yard line once again. That's number 86, Daryl, or Michael Tolbert, pardon me, Tolbert. That passing caught game. That, caught that touchdown pass to bring Valpo to within one. That's right. The, the passing game for Valparaiso is just tearing up the Butler defense. Uh, they're, stuff, they're stuffing the run, but they just cannot stop the pass. They don't have the outside people with the quickness and, and uh, enough experience to stay with these great receivers that Valparaiso has. Router keeping it himself, and he's out to another first down at about the 40, looks like the 43-yard line. They're going to spot it up, or maybe the 42. Well, Brian, it's getting a little scary now. Two minutes, 53 seconds left. Butler only with a one-point lead, not able to put any points on the board on that last drive to give him any, any breathing room, so to speak. And this is where the defensive stop is essential. A lot of heart and determination going in. Here As goes Adam Burrell oh, tries to get Browder. He avoids him. Browder's going to be out to another first down as he runs out of bounds. As he is forced out of bounds. I'll tell you what. And a lot of people wanted a flag on that play as 
It's like he was well, it's one down out of bounds. It's one thing to just come up and drill somebody five yards out of bounds, but he had a hold of him as they were going out of bounds, and that's legal. And he didn't try to throw him into the wall or anything. He actually let go of him, so there's nothing wrong with that. 233 left to play. 42-41. A barn burner here at homecoming 1995. First down and 10 at Butler's 27-yard line for the Valparaiso Crusaders. Here's a draw one more time. Now. And he has brought down the initial hit coming from Joe Miles, and Valparaiso continues to march the ball up the field, looking to go ahead once again in this ball game and clock Dave, continuing to run here they've done a nice job of controlling the clock here on this drive and butler really uh, in, in, in desperate need of a stop here they're taking they, their time too look if, at this if they if they if valparaiso is able to score it's going to give butler well, very few moments yes. to get that ball back down in the end zone and valpo very confident in their offense and can afford to take as much time as they want i'd like to see a turnover here the flip is off to number 29, and he is buried by the Butler defense. Beautiful pursuit that was, by the defense. That was Jody Hart that was on that beautiful. run, and he was met by a group of defenders, one being Adam Burrell. Third down now, Brian. Butler's got to hold him here. Big third down and five play, and we see Toby Jacobs. Look at the replay of this. Look at the Butler defense. Just swarming there. Let it all the Nick way. Nick Winnings and the rest of the linebacking crew and some defensive backs. Pals are in there. The Butler sideline really getting into it. Third down and five. Here comes it's the Browder pass. rolling out. He'll look the pass. He lobs it deep to the end zone. To oh, it's broken it's up. Complete. What a beautiful play by Jeremy Ely coming back into the game after the injury. And man, what a play he did make. And that was Michael Tolbert in the end zone. There's no better time for Ely to be in there and make that kind of play. What a great job. Tolbert was in the end zone. He caught the previous touchdown pass. Watch there you Ely. see a high lofting pass and incomplete. He went up right with him there and he blocked it right out, stuck his right hand up, knocked it away. Perfect. Picture perfect, I'll even say. A pass defense on that by Jeremy Ely. Not bad for a converted running back. One minute and six seconds left to play in the game. Look at it this. Arnold comes Mickens down. comes onto the field. I don't know if he's just talking to the guys or if he's going to play defense. I wouldn't be surprised if he put his helmet on and played some defense. Look at him getting fired up there. Look at him. There he is, Arnold Mickens. A true leader in every sense of the word out there. Not only pumping up his offensive crew, so Coach but the defensive crew as well. A minute and six seconds left. Valparaiso trails by one. It all comes down to this play of fourth down and five at the 22-yard line. The ball game rides right here, Brian. Will they go for the three or will they go for the score? This could make them or break them. How much confidence do they have in They're their They're going for kicker? it all here, Brian. They're going for it all. Apparently, the confidence isn't there. This here Butler crowd is really getting into it. Go on. Fourth down and five. 22-yard line, a minute six. The Bulldogs need a stop. It's Browder back to pass. He's looking, oh, and he no. finds number 37. Will this be the first down? Darren though? Rodriguez. That is the first down. A big pass by Nick Browder to Rodriguez on that play. And now Valparaiso has a first down on Butler's 13-yard line with under a minute left to play. Here's the replay. Browder, again, showing poise as he has all day. And boy, that went right through the hands of the Butler defender. There's Browder. Cool. And off Crack the track now. now, and they bring him down at the 10. A gain of three. Less 35 seconds left to play. I don't know about you, Brian, but uh, I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I can almost feel the intensity up here, man. Oh, like, goodness. Time continues uh, to tick away, and Valparaiso is allowing it. Second down at seconds. seven. They've got to stop the pass. They've got to stop the pass here. A great homecoming rivalry here. 
Browder back to pass. He's looking in zone to Heinrichs. Nice coverage by Kyle Condon. That could have been offensive pass interference there. He was shoving off on Kyle Condon. They got lucky and they didn't call it there. Eight seconds a left. A mere eight ticks left on the clock. Ooh, I got some big time butterflies. Valparaiso. Oh, man. At the 10 yard line, third down and seven. They trail by one. Now, if they can get this play off, Dave. Oh man! <laughs> they can. They could bring oh, the. They could bring the place kicker out. Well, they could bring the place kicker out right now, and who knows what they're going to do. Cameron Hatton is the place kicker for Valparaiso University. One point is the margin here, Brian. Forty-two to forty-one, Butler leads. Oh, 83 points have been scored in this tremendous back and forth ball game. What an offensive game it has been. Tell you what, uh, Butler showing a lot of heart, stopping, stopping Valparaiso where they're at right now. Hat oh my goodness. Has not hit a field goal all season. He's attempted to and missed on both times. Maybe that's a good reason why they in, went for it on fourth in down. In fact, he has had one of. They have, they have never had one blocked, but Hatton has not been successful in terms of the field goal. And Dave, you really couldn't ask for a much better game for homecoming. Unless we were beating them by 40, because I'm nervous, man. Butler. Oh, my. Very early in the game, down 14 to nothing. It looked as if we were going to have a replay of the previous weeks, but showing a lot of determination and poise coming back. And now it comes down to these final eight seconds. It's Browder back to pass. He'll look towards the end zone, being pressured. Out of Heinrich bounds. Was out of bounds. Out of when bounds. He caught it. He knew and they're going to there. call it incomplete. Three seconds remain now. Fourth down and seven. And they're now go I believe the they'll goal. go for the field goal. <laughs> this does not get any more exciting than this. This game has oh. been intense from the get-go. Butler commanded the second in the half. Crowd. Butler has really commanded the second half. And now it comes down to this final kick. Oh, my. Number 91, Cameron Hatton. You don't think Hatton's has, just a little bit nervous right now? Hatton, who has yet to hit a field goal this season, will look to hit probably one of the biggest ones of the season. I'm going to ice him a little bit here and give him a little time to think about it some more. That's what I like to see. The more he thinks about it, the more chance he has to miss it. So much on the line. Such hard work this afternoon for this Bulldog team. Such hard work throughout the first five games of this season, trying to break the four-week losing streak and it all coming down to a kick by Cameron Hatton. They blocked the extra point there that would have tied the game. Can they block this one? It would be a far bigger one. Butler leads 42-41. The crowd is but on its feet Cameron here. Hatton will look to win the game for the Valparaiso Crusaders and steal the homecoming victory from the Bulldogs. Here we go. The snap is away. The kick is up. And it is good. The kick is good. Time has expired. And the Valparaiso Crusaders, in dramatic style, have stolen the homecoming victory from the Butler Bulldogs. What a, what a tough loss for this group of kids. Oh, man, I'll tell you. You hate to see it. They're, they're hanging their heads, but they got a lot to be proud of today, Brian. We saw the offense really step it up. We'll recap the game in just a moment when we go to the post game. This is Butler Football, 95.